Guys, so listen, Sean's not going to be here tonight, okay? So, But he'll be here in spirit forever. See that? Look at that. He had a baby. This this is a full-size two scale, which is about right. Look at That's full-size to scale Sean right there, which is crazy to think about. And I just felt like he'd be missing if, uh, if you know, this costs so much more than you guys think. See how much that, see how I Photoshopped those legs onto him. I want it to be known. That's a Photoshop job right there. The baby's real, though. It's exactly what his baby looks like. It's crazy. All right, listen. Where are we in camera? Just a little something. There you go. That's a perfect spot for it. Oh, man. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's Tuesday. It's a live stream. I'm out of focus. Cut my own hair again. Literally haven't got a haircut since COVID. Fucking killing it, by the way. Um, we have some special guests on tonight. I am unprepared and late, could not find an HDMI cable to save my life. And that happens to be because I took all of this to Kentucky so that I could do the Matt, uh, the Matt Madness thing on the whiskeychannel.com in Kentucky. So I took all of this stuff and then I'm the, it was just, I never set it back up because I haven't reused it here. So my bad, it is late and that's my fault. That being said, Jared and Rachel from Bar Barrel King on tonight. We're going to go, we're going to chat. Patrons asked a ton of questions. We're going to go through some of those questions as well. We were going to do a drop tonight, um, but the patrons again took care of some crazy shit today. So we'll go over that when they get on. So, um, whew, damn, dude, I got to start running. This is crazy. I'm going to bring, holy shit. I'm going to bring Jared and Rachel in and then they can talk so I can catch my breath. I'm fat. This is wild. Hello. <laughs> What's hey. going on, buddy? Holy shit! My cardio is bad. <laughs> too, too much, too much, too much fat, fat kid whiskey. Dude, too much fat kid whiskey. Not enough moving. I was in great shape for like three weeks. We like bring all these barrels in. I'm moving barrels every day. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. We get a fork truck. I'm out of shape and fat again. <laughs> you know, it's like. But welcome to the stream. Thank you guys for being on. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Always. Literally always. Um, Obviously, for those who don't know, Jared and Rachel, owners of Barrel King, I believe would probably be the correct statement there. Yes. She owns it. I work for her. Two of my favorite people. Well, the setup, however you want to look at it, fantastic setup. Doing a great it job works. on both ends of the spectrum over there. <laughs> uh, you know, had the pleasure of... You guys took care of us, helped us bottle our very first things we ever bottled ever. We're, we're at your guys' space for Pours in the Park last year. For those who don't know, the people that showed up to Pours in the Park, had you showed up to Pours in the Park, got a Virtue Spirits release at Pours in the Park, it was literally because of Jared and Rachel and the team over at Barrel King. So hand-labeled everything, hand-wrote everything. And you yeah. guys, I look back because now we do it here. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> We have a great team. We do. We have a great team. Holy yeah. shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> we put a bunch of stuff on our labels. We're like, we'll just write it. Who gives a shit? Idiots yeah. or idiot. You know what I mean? So, Sean, we, Sean and I had a meeting yesterday. He's like, dude, what if we just bought stamps? I'm like, that's the greatest idea I've ever heard in my life. Mm -hmm. But uh, every mash bill is now a stamp. Every age is a stamp. Every state will be a stamp. You know what I mean? Are you going to do that? We already bought. We bought what we're gonna test this. But <laughs> That's crazy. We bought one because now you know what we could do with the stamps. What we could do is we could literally just like assembly line this. One person's got the age stamp. One person's got the mash bill stamp. Next person, uh, state state of distillation stamp in the box. You know what I mean? Oh, so like on the bottle, you're gonna roll it, roll it. I'm hoping, it? I, dude. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm willing to try almost uh, anything. Otherwise, you could do it flat and then roll it back up. I've seen people do that before. Oh. Man, so, so my the, our concern is the drying with yeah. the ink, yeah, and smearing. Yeah, I don't know. We have to see, dude. It's a disaster. We we uh, short sighted on the writing that much on each label, like idiots. But <laughs> all right, and we've got somebody who I've never heard of in chat donating super chatting a hundred dollars, saying, "Wow, finally a real whiskey company on this channel. Love me some Barrel King." <laughs> all right, fair, fair enough. <laughs> 
<laughs> also, <laughs> uninvited from the grand opening. Nick owns the property. <laughs> uninvited, dude. Permanent man. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Dude, show up. We'll have security escort you off of your own property. <laughs> no, but for real, thank you guys for coming on. Sean's obviously out. Sean had said uh, had a baby. Looks, it looks. Congratulations, Sean. Oh, that's a that's cute it. baby. That's the baby. Good looking kid. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God he doesn't look. Like Sean. <laughs> Gosh, dude, didn't fall far far from the tree. Oh. Whew. Um. So what we're gonna what we'll 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 I have like I have my own questions for you guys. I know the answers to some of these. Some of these I actually don't know the answers to, so I'm interested to hear the answer. Um, but we'll talk about the Porter thing real quick, just because there's been a lot going on with Porter. Obviously, kind of to like launch. Um, some people probably found out about you that way. I think I found out about you guys through Porter, like a hundred percent, actually. Mm -hmm. Um. The first blend, Whiskey King One, actually was the first time I had heard of Barrel King. So, um, what's what's interesting because it, this will lead into my questions. But like the double barreling in these legacy barrels, very different than I would call. I would just say industry at this point. Um, and Matt talked about Matt like we have a group this group chat, and Matt will send us like a link to a pick or something. He's like, if this one's really good, like go, you know, you gotta buy it. So. Matt sends a link in this chat and he's like, it's, it's a blend. Like, it's not just a pick, it's a blend and it's really good. And I'm like, I'm always in for Matt blends, no matter like Matt's just good at blending. Right. So yeah. it's like, I'm always in for Matt blends, got the blend for Matt. Then like, obviously I, I reached out to Jared because Matt was like, Hey, here's Jared's number. This is what's going on. This is why they started. This is, you know, their whole story. So then I just reached out to say like, Hey, if we can ever do anything, just, I'm there like the channels there, whatever you guys need, you know, whatever. And then that turned into like literally the first time we ever talked, Jared was like, you just need somewhere to bottle. Just ship your shit down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> that seems like a huge favor when you don't know if I'm a piece of shit. You know what I mean? That's funny. So, um, which honestly this cat, this is perfect timing, but the, <laughs> the, it turned out perfect. We got down there. I moved, you know, um, what I think eight barrels, seven barrels, something like that. A bunch of glass. We got our, we got our labels shipped directly to you. Had never seen them in person yeah. before. Yeah. Uh, we were, a, we were clearly were a mess, right? Like there's just too much going on. And, um, you guys took care of everything. It was amazing. And then while we were down there, it's like, we, while we're down here, we might as well start a sweet project. So then yeah. we started King Slayer while we were down there. Um, but tonight, well, recently you guys brought Matt on as ta master blender slash tasting or chief tasting officer, I believe is the title. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is huge for personally. I think for Matt, I think that's an incredible step. Like we're, Whiskey tube is this thing like we we all exist outside of the industry, right? Like you yeah. guys are, we'll call you guys industry for the sake of this conversation. You guys are very different than normal industry. We will call you guys industry. You guys are industry. You, Matt, ourselves until we started the NDP project stuff, all of us basically kind of the outside. I wouldn't even, I guess maybe media is the right word or something, but I don't even think most of the time it's not even really media. It's just kind of like reviews, shooting the shit, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. You guys bringing Matt in is like the most beautiful thing because now Matt is just about just boom, like in the industry, in a role that everybody that watches him and pays attention to him and loves him, everybody already thinks he's good at this thing, which is blending, right? Yeah. So I think that was freaking awesome. And I hope that that brought more eyes to you guys because you guys deserve the attention in my personal opinion. I'm a big fan of you, both of you and the brand itself. So um, I'd love to know because this is the thing I don't know. And then we'll get back to Matt after this, though. <laughs> <laughs> what did, what made you start this? I don't think I've ever heard this story. And I watched the stream with you and Matt, Jared. What made you guys start using legacy barrels with the MGP thing makes sense, right? MGP makes sense basically for almost everybody. Like the MGP question, like I want to start an NDP or even start a distillery, start whatever. MGP makes sense because it's, consistently pretty damn good you you have you have an expectation the profiles there everybody on the market at this enthusiasts know what mgp tastes like your mgp doesn't taste anything like mgp i think the people who have had that would 
agree to that statement. And I, but I, you were the first person out of all the places we've been that is openly like, we're doing stag barrels, we're doing willet barrels. Yeah, we got some fucking Barton over there. We got some cool shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To answer the question. So <laughs> I, I just honestly, I, I don't even. Uh, Man, I'm trying to think of the answer to that. I don't. I don't think we did it before we seen the stag barrels were available. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? I don't think we did it before that, did we? No. Was so, your first release just was it was it a non finished MGP then? So yes, everything was well. It might it was finished in like so we did this Philly blend for a while. You've had the Philly blend, so it was like I love that. It, so it was a bunch of different wine barrels, and yeah. then we did uh, we just did a bunch of finished stuff right off the bat, some like outrageous this like finished stuff that I don't really drink to be honest, but it was what would maybe get attention, you know, we didn't really, and, and there was a market for it. So, and then we started with that. We, then we did single barrels. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we didn't really do anything but that and single barrels for a while. And really we didn't have any customers like for over a year, Mm -hmm. really. We just kind of like, we started out with like 30 members and we added like, not many, you know, and it was just, we lost for a long time. Uh, but just kind of making things that I knew, even though I didn't drink them, I knew they were good. You know, I knew I can kind of tell the balance and the flavor profile. If even though something I might not love myself, I knew that's was better than what was out there. If that makes sense. Yeah. And we were like in a bar and I seen that these, these stag barrels were available and I'm like, and I asked her already once, Right, and I already asked you once. She, yeah, because we were broke, you know. I was like, I don't know. I always had, I always was doing this weird shit. I was like, let's try this, let's try this, let's try this, and you know, I don't want to say nothing stuck because it's all there. We used to have some of them still today, and they're all very good. But that strawberry yeah. Philly, that's stuck. By so the it, way, so that strawberry Philly is really good. Yeah, yeah. Fucking monster. <laughs> it it really monster. is. It's one of the. I will drink that all day yeah. long. That particular that, one. That, very yeah. Good. So, so. Though, so I think I've seen them available, and I was like, "Hey, how about we spend another like twenty or thirty thousand? And she's just like, "Oh, and shit!" Like she's not having it. And then I took her to the bar, and I was like, "Drink this, drink yeah. this," you know. And then, uh, then I was literally like, "Look, like I can't believe these are available. Let's just let's do it," you know. And I think this is kind of how it went. I don't think we did any other barrels before no. that, and. Uh, and then I kind of bought them without the person that runs the sales over there really knowing that so we just bought everything they had. So he was almost oh, shit. Like, okay. He was like, well, usually people call me with that big of an order. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when we actually just ordered like, at first we ordered like eight, right? And we we're like, I was like, let's see if they're good. Yeah. And they That's showed still up, a like, lot. And I'm like, holy shit, these are good. So then I was like, okay, we'll buy 70. And we bought Holy 70. Shit. <laughs> so this that's insane. Cause I in my brain, I went, you just bought one, you tried it. That turned out. We'll we'll buy three, four. You went from eight oh, to 70, which is wild. Every single one of them. Yeah. That's and, wild. Uh, and she went for it, thank God. And <laughs> you know, and and really like when we do finishes, like it's really it's better off to let something kind of oxidize and dry out. So if you get like a wine barrel where you kind of get that funky on that Philly, is that we mm-hmm. let them ox like open up. We let them oxidize a little bit, um, which is kind of dangerous too. Sometimes you can go over, but with these, I was like, I have the stag barrel. I want that thing wet. <laughs> like I want yeah. it as full of stag as possible. Right. So we did some of that stuff and we realized, well, I think the first one we did actually, I was like, I'm going to try to make, I feel like I was I actually, I have a bottle of it, two of them. I wanted to, I wanted to take and, and basically mimic batch 15, This which is, you know, fat kid whiskey, right? Sure. And uh, I swear to God, it's almost identical. And I was like, yeah. holy shit, this is something. And uh, and we released like 66 of those. Sure. And uh, we have two two right now left. And uh, so I was like, we got something. But truthfully, and then, but then I knew we were getting into that. It was going to be, it's a gimmick, you know? Oh, they're just saying it's, mm-hmm. we, we still heard it. We heard it on a podcast a couple of weeks ago. Like, it's just another NDP, NDP rebarreling, you know? And, it's really okay. not like well, you here's know. the thing. Everybody, I don't know what podcast it was, truthfully. So I'm just gonna yeah. go on and I'm just gonna I'm gonna say some blanket statements because I don't it doesn't matter. Okay. They if you're willing to say it on a platform, you have to be willing for somebody to be like, You're fucking idiot on a different platform. This is the <laughs> rules, right? So yeah. the the thing people can say whatever they want. I don't know that like 
Penelope, Penelope, very obviously MGP and DP, right? Only yeah. nothing else. Um, I mean, they did like, they did the same, they venture into Rye territory, but still MGP Rye. Their thing was like a toasted four grain, right? Their thing wasn't reinvent the wheel wheel. There's, there's other four grains on the market. There's plenty of toasted products on the market. Now, toasted four grains, few and far between, right? Mm. And when you like do a pick with Penelope, well, it was pretty cool because it was similar in the fact that it was like, Hey, here's like a chunk of each of our vatted product blend them together and like see what your favorite ratio is and we can do that right reproduce that for you which is cool because that's unique from a, like just a single barrel pick or something like that the same as all of matt's whiskey kings our king slayer people's blends with you are unique to the same standpoint right now i think what's really cool with yours is i hadn't had i'm gonna give somebody uh, he's probably in chat his name's brandon he is in chat I I've, I got to give Brandon credit because I call Brandon a, a fucking idiot when we went and did a stag pick, right? And I, and Brandon knows that when I say that, he knows that I love him. But we went and did a stag. Brandon won a stag pick in the SBS Select program, the the single barrel for Buffalo Trace, right? Won the pick was like Bourbon Junkies pick. Bur Brandon, mind you, has been around since like day seven of the YouTube yeah, yeah. channel. So he's like, dude, Bourbon Junkies pick, let's go. Dude, a fucking stag pick. You know what I mean? Like a stag. Like yeah. I assume Buffalo Trace hates us. We ask for media samples. They're like, you two can kick rocks somewhere else. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they, we get a pick. We go do the pick. We pick a stag, obviously. They, at the end, they say, hey, you want the barrel? 100% want the barrel without a doubt, right? The barrel's still right over like to my right <laughs> yeah. uh, this day. Brandon goes, dude, since you guys are starting this NDP journey, why don't you take that stag bro and put some like some light whiskey or some something in it that you're yeah. buying? I'm like, that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard in my Seriously? life. <laughs> swear to God, dude, I swear. To God. I get that all the time. It's, so like, people that have been distilling their whole lives and doing this their whole lives, it, I, they would, I've asked a few people and they would go, the useful life of the barrel is over. And I'm like, it's only been in there seven years. Yeah. You I don't, what? yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I don't yeah. agree that I, there's Elijah Craig 18 is 18. You know what I mean? Pappy 23 is 23. Yeah, yeah, Something's yeah. going on in there. I don't, you know, it can be magic, but it's, it's still going on, right? Yeah. Yeah. I literally, so I didn't obviously know you guys That's at that funny. time, went out to Barrel King. We start drinking like stag finished barrels, <laughs> Barton finished barrels. I literally got back and I go, I have to apologize to you. This is crazy how good it is. Like, I had no idea how great it I made fun of you for this. And at the time, we had no idea, right? It, but, in in back to like the industry part in the industry that makes you abnormal you guys are abnormal yeah. to the industry with oh, yeah. between your distribution the way that you sell the club side of it is very uh different yeah personally something i'm in love with but it's very different the way that you guys sell and the way you guys blend and curate or produce or whatever word everybody wants to use and it's because of those finishing barrels that makes your product unique yeah. i can give uh i can give myself Penelope Black Labels, and I'm going to guess MGP, right? Mm -hmm. I could take 80, 90% of the products you guys have put out that I've had, and I wouldn't guess MGP on them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it is different. It is original. It so is. whatever podcast, the, all that, a real long story, yeah. say like, hey, shut the fuck up. Though. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. No, it's in a, yeah, for sure. That's funny. Yeah. I, uh, Oh, I was going to say something, but yeah, we, we, we really just caught a lot of shit. We still do catch, catch mm -hmm. shit for it. It does work. And I honestly, I think that it works great. if you're mindful about, and, and I know that using other like, and I'm just going to throw this out there. You can use other legacy and it does, it does, it creates a lot of like, um, you know, oils and a lot of reactions, you know, using different legacy barrels or just any, you know, different distillery barrels, but you can also, I believe, do it with same distillery too, but you just have to be mindful about the barrels you you use if you want to create, say, layers of flavor, you know, mm -hmm. layers of like depths of whiskey. Sure. And uh, it's just like cooking, you know. So, you know, you can, I think that it can be done too. I just, I don't know. I don't want to start. I mean, we actually have one we're, we're putting out uh, in March, uh, which is... MGP been, you know, finished in another MGP barrel, you know, sure. and dude, it's not normal. Like you can, 
you just have to the barrel it's not you can't just go grab a barrel and say put a whiskey in there you do have to like um you know you know think about it and try to find something if this is a sweet whiskey you want a more punchy barrel or if, if it's a punchy whiskey you want a sweeter barrel or you know you have to use the barrel like you're blending with the liquid sure so, but it's uh yeah I like That's it's kind of the beginning you know I really love honestly it. i think it's the i think it's hard to set yourself apart as an ndp at this it goes back to obviously i'm giving that other podcast i'm giving them a hard time um, because it, obviously it's a discussion to be had, right? <laughs> Truly, yeah. but because there's a lot of people out there who there's so many NDPs and there's a ton of solely MGP NDPs, mm-hmm. Penelope, Nulu, you guys, uh, you know, like we source from MGP as well. I think Nashville Barrel Code sources a ton from MGP. I believe there's a ton. I think it's endless. Truly, and yeah. MGP makes so much whiskey; it's insane. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think that like. The fun part from a creative standpoint is trying to set yourself apart. We have the same product. Mm -hmm. We have the same starting point, right? Our base is where we all have the same base here. Some people get really high off that base, do a really great job. You guys, Penelope, I'm, I was a, I'm a, I still am a big Penelope guy. I just love Penelope. Um, Sagamore literally launched a brand on only sourcing MGP and only the rye to, which makes in my brain, like makes even less sense. I cannot believe can imagine launching a brand on rye you know what i mean and being like that's going to be fine yeah because it's like that is interesting dude bourbon seems so much easier to sell i don't know whatever it is right <laughs> but i think to your point we dumped obviously some of our five-year-old sagamore um bourbon mm-hmm. distillate mm-hmm. that is our contract mass. it's the same as our contract mass bill but this wasn't contract distilled for us but it's identical so we had one of those barrels well they're kelvin barrels I'm like, that's oh, a good, wow. that's a great start. Love that, right? Oh, wow. Yeah. We like that five-year distillate. And then back to your point, that's only, that barrel's only been used for five years. It's got and as a Kelvin barrel, we got some, we've got some growth inside of this. Yeah. Dude, we, and I don't even know. And this, and I, and I think Sean and Brandon did this the day I wasn't there. We kind of made an agreement that like some of our different barrels would like, we'd try finishing them in some of this other shit. Oh my gosh, dude! We have trashed one of these whiskeys. It is awful, and it's in that Sagamore five-year-old Kelvin barrel right now. Now, here's the thing: we got nothing but time to let her turn around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but holy shit, does she need some help getting wherever the hell we're headed? Because it, it happens. Dude, mm-hmm. It's bad. It's bad. It's, it tastes like if you if you're a big Jim Beam repeal batch, you love nuts. It's a nut whiskey now. You yeah, know what I mean. Fun. Wasn't yeah. nutty going in, which is interesting. Now it wasn't the best. It wasn't like a great whiskey going in either. So back to you saying like you're kind of blending in that barrel. We weren't, I wouldn't call what we were doing intentionally blending a good whiskey into this barrel that we pulled whiskey that we did like out of it. It's a great thing to keep in mind, obviously well, moving forward. You have a nutty component <laughs> in your warehouse oh, yeah. now. You can put, you know, 1% of oh. the nuts mm-hmm. in everything and you have a, uh, <laughs> you know. I'm not a nutty whiskey guy. I just, yeah. I wish I was. My life would be easier. Just enough to get a little, a little toastiness. You don't even, you won't, you won't, you won't even notice it. You know, just a little bit of a layer, just a little layer. You don't even need to yeah. notice. It. Yeah, yeah. Something. I yeah. don't know, dude. I. We'll see. You know what I mean? She might get redumped at some point. There might be another. This might yeah. be a whole journey. This whiskey may go on a whole adventure. You know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But. So when you guys. Uh, so you guys started this. How did you guys start this a year and a half ago? Almost two years Almost in March. Two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Almost two. March, two years, mm-hmm. yeah. And you started with the club idea, like at the very beginning. We did. Yes. Was it what, Rachel? Was that your? Was the club your idea? No. So was it Jared's? <laughs> it was Jared's idea. Damn, you are so smart. It's wild. He is the idea guy. I mean, it's hey, he calls we didn't have our. He's not. <laughs> if, if not for our members, and I'm not as I mean this, we wouldn't have like kept going. Mm-hmm. Like sure. we, would, we might gain five people a month or ten people a month, but that was like that was like confirmation we're mm-hmm. on the right journey. So and and they were just really excited about it. So you know, in the very beginning, uh it was tough, but then you know, as long as you're growing, you know you're doing something right. Sure. Right? Especially whenever you're not doing something nobody's done. 
and uh and you're just getting like ranked over the coals for it all the time but it sure. kept growing so mm -hmm. we just we just kept going and you we know? got good feedback from the members yeah everybody too, loved it yeah. so that was important yeah so we just well, didn't have to mark it let's a little bit we're gonna a little bit explain you guys can go into this as far as you want but we're gonna a little bit explain this the club slash membership side of it because before you explain it it's something that like you guys supported us in a really big way like truly a really big way and when we needed it really bad and 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 as we didn't even know you guys which was incredible right it says a lot to me about who you two are it meant a lot it meant the world to me truly i shed tears outside of your guys's barrel house because when we were bottling because i was so happy that we had oh. made it to this moment that has taken seemingly it felt like you know five years it was like a year and a half or something but we had hit so much red tape and had so many like dumb problems with the state of michigan with certain you know government agency type stuff and like you were just like first time we ever talk on the phone like let's do it we can do it here it's not a big deal let's just make sure we're getting everything done you guys submitted the labels you guys did all of the hard work like to get it done for us uh, like just uh, like truly i don't know i because you know just cuz cuz you guys are damn good people honestly so we go there and we do this when we bottle over there incredible experience also invaluable knowledge we have the same bottle filler as you which was insanely helpful to like see that interaction you guys got this guy named joey who's a bad motherfucker okay joey is a mother he's a monster joey's a fucking man i hope he's like, watching right now oh, dude, joey, joey's like a dreamboat of a dude he's just the best ever he is dude he's the best but we go over there and um when we came back i was like i gotta do anything i can like to support you guys right and i had had the product while i was there and i loved it and I, at that point i think you had sent like the philly strawberry i think you sent uh an omega like some pretty big bottles right yeah. and i was like these are fucking incredible so i when i got back i signed up and i was like i'm signing up to support them mm -hmm. well then I didn't even understand. I don't even, we never even, I don't, we might have maybe fully really. discussed how like yeah. the membership, the program situation worked. I get back, I'm like, fuck it, I'm signing up because like I'm ride or die. We're good forever. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I'm in, fucking two months in, I'm sold forever. <laughs> like two months in, I'm like, this is my favorite thing. I like to pick every, I like the picking every month and I'm gonna let you guys explain this because you'll do it better than I will. But I like the variability. I like the ability to like, that sounds good for me. I like that it's not like a, here's your bottle, thanks, see you later. You know what I mean? I love it. So everybody in chat, to, to preface it, you guys can explain it. They have a club slash membership program that you join just a monthly, and then you guys have bottles to pick from that you're curating out of that. Yeah, I mean, I think you summed it up pretty nicely. The, the biggest points that I try to make when I'm explaining the membership is – you can cancel at any time. We don't require any commitment. So, you know, I know, I know it's a huge commitment. Um, $125 a month. That's, we respect that amount of money from each of our members. So unhappy at any time, need to pause for any time. We, we totally understand, uh, no red tape to jump through to do that. Um, the other important thing was that members get to choose their bottles. Um, we didn't want it to be a cookie cutter. This is the bottle you get hope you're happy with it. Um, so historically we've released two to four new batches every month for members uh, to choose from. And not only do they have access to their, their membership bottle that their monthly payment covers, but they have access to the rest of the store. So any previous releases that haven't sold out, you have access to um, the rest of the, the releases for the month you have access to with a, an additional bottle discount as well. I love that. Like, I love the, I go watch Jared's tasting note. <laughs> the one month I had like figured out the secret and I <laughs> snagged a bottle. I'm like that. Something's going on over there. <laughs> Jared told me, he didn't talk about that very much. <laughs> Jared, Jared said that this one was, it was good. And that and he moved on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. And listen, you're not, I, you were, neither of you are like pushy salesy. None of that. No. So it's not normally that, but when it is like as quiet as like that, yeah, it smells like this. It's it's good. And then next bottle, I'm like, that's kind of interesting. 
I'm intrigued because that seems like something's that's like funny. that's almost like if you know, you know, you know, if you're if you're in, you're in. And then if you're not, you just miss. And that's a bummer. Right. So I loved that. I love truly love every month. I go and I pick my bottle. Rachel mentioned it. But just to like put it back in there, your monthly payment, that 125, that gets you the bottle. So like now here now it does feel if you do not check your bank account. <laughs> like like a lot it feels like you're getting a free bottle of whiskey every month <laughs> like, it's a huge problem it's a humongous problem <laughs> like but i love it you get it you get the bottle every month i love the choice i think that you guys nailed it with the option um part of it i think the option part is what makes it feel so special if sean and i like this is not something we've ever done if Sean and I just wanted to go do a pick every month, I think that's doable, right? And then set up a tier in 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 a Patreon that says every month you get a bottle of the pick that we did yeah. that month. Mm -hmm. Some people would do that. That's the oh, thing yeah. that I think people would be interested sure. in. Yep. I also think that that puts a lot of pressure in which I'm sure why you said the two to four, but it puts a lot of pressure on, hey, we just have to pick something this month because we haven't done it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Rather than... Hey, we didn't have a pick for the last month because the picks we've done that we loved haven't come out yet. And those will come out whenever they come out, but we're going to do more picks we like in the meantime. But again, it can't be every two weeks forever, no matter what, or every month forever, no matter what, because we're going to find some shit that we didn't love. You know, yeah. it's the same reason we haven't dumped 18 more barrels out of our place yeah. and just dropped them to patrons because it's like, listen, when stuff's ready, when it feels like we're not yeah. overloading everybody when it feels like the right barrel in the right time or whatever, right? Like if it's the grand opening or whatever it is, it's like, we want that. I want you to get that bottle and be like, that's fucking cool. That's all I want. That's it. It's yep. as simple as that. Right. I know not everybody's going to love everything that we put out. I think everybody should believe that when they're like producing a yes. product, yes. no, nothing's for everybody, but man, do I love the way there's two to four every month. If you want by, you know, two, 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 four of them, you know, the different way you buy the other ones, if you want, there's still stuff there. Sometimes if something like was left from last yeah. month, you can pick another one of those up if you want. Yeah. I just love that. I think that that program like this, the club, the membership, the program, whatever the correct word is truly my, like as a whiskey, I, I just consider it a whiskey subscription and I fucking love it. Honestly, I don't, I say that out of my own fucking pocket every month. And it, I don't know if it's been like seven or eight months. Also, you guys are really good at your job. Because I accidentally didn't use the code last month, paid for it, got a refund. Didn't email anybody. Just got a <laughs> refund. I almost emailed when I got a refund because I almost was like, why the fuck did they refund my bottle? That's so funny. That's funny. We had, we had to do Ryan Elvis did the same shit. <laughs> oh, that doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. That, doesn't, that sounds like a Ryan Elvis thing right yeah. there. I was like, dude, yeah. you didn't even use the code. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're just double, triple paying right now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. really quick. We Go ahead. To, like uh, we have to like bottle for months ahead of time, and sometimes we put things in the bottle. They're not ready in the bottle. We have to wait for them to kind of cure in the bottle for a couple months. So if you don't get ready for January, February, like November, December, it's it's rough. And then we've also had one month where we didn't release something, and that was that's like a year ago. I don't know if you remember that. Mm -hmm. We we're like, hey, you know, there's a lot of stuff in the in the in the shop still. Not everybody got everything that's in there and that was like it's been like a year year and a half ago mm -hmm. and now we've kind of learned uh to look ahead but uh but yeah we don't my point is we don't release things that aren't good mm -hmm. we just sure. won't so yeah i haven't had one i truly haven't had one people it seems to be like a a message that i get pretty often is like hey like i want an unbiased opinion do you think it's worth it you know what i mean and sure. the thing is is like there's a lot of like there's a lot of ton of bottles obviously like how we run the channel from the business side is the channel pays for the whiskey right like that's yeah we sure. do the content we do the reviews yeah. these yeah. bottles are purchased by the channel for the channel so that we can make content with them this was something like i came back and it was like i just want to support you guys and then literally like the second month i'm like i i just want more of that whiskey you know what i mean like it was like I get to do both. I get whiskey back for supporting, which is awesome. I love that. It's just a double. It's a two. It's a win-win on both sides of that coin. Um, I do think the way it's set up is 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 phenomenal. I think you guys have done a really great job with it, and I think you guys have done a really good job at keeping the quality up over. I mean, like I said, six, seven, eight months, however long I've been a part of it. I get a bottle every month, 
in every month. Like I'm not never disappointed. The toast listen, the toast of vanilla stag, big fan, huge fan. Also, <laughs> it's I'm a fat good. guy. I'm a fat guy, huge fan. It's fucking awesome. So that's funny. Um, really quick, let me catch up on chat here. Chris says, Team Rachel and Jared, hashtag cult life true. Without a doubt. And then Dustin had gifted 10 bourbon junkies memberships. Thank you for doing that, buddy. I appreciate it. He told me I was going to cry in the live stream. That's probably why he did that because he was like, he cried. So there's my 10. Appreciate it. <laughs> Bove, can't wait until Dan breaks down and hires Cam to be chief whiskey blender of his own company. Bove, listen to me. What you got to understand about Cam is on a bad day, I'm competing with him, right? <laughs> on a bad day, I'm putting down 18 <laughs> barrel samples of tasting and a bar night into this Matt Madness thing and all, damn near beating him. I don't like need anybody's help in this front. You know what I mean? It's pretty crazy. Um, Keegan Burdurf, <laughs> one of the best moments of my adult life, was going to Bourbon, Missouri with my family. Never will forget it. Hashtag gold for life. Wow. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. This is the other thing people don't know real quick. Mark Boyer, family time done. Love you guys. Some of the best whiskey ever. Thanks for what you did for Matt. He's a great human. Much love. Thanks for the super chat, buddy. Um, you guys sell... Okay. The gold member thing, Luke, will you put it in chat and then I can try to pin it while I'm doing this? Um, just so people, one of the questions we got a lot of, and I didn't answer all of them, and I, I'm sure Sean did not answer all of them either. One of your guys' single barrels came in third of our whiskey of the year, and we only pulled 18 whiskeys that we thought would even compete in like a blind, right? So if we had like 50 some new whiskeys this year, we're like this 18 should be relatively close on like a scale of that we'll use. Um, I threw in, <laughs> I threw in the bottle that it was a single barrel and I threw that in. Um, I drank that in the shower. I drank that yeah, bottle 50, in the shower. That's funny. fantastic. There's a yeah. picture, I think in your guys' Facebook group of me, <laughs> or that bottle in my shower. Yeah. Um, but I, I threw that one in there. That was like an easy, I didn't, Matt's Matt's Whiskey King three definitely could have should have would have should have gone in there. Um, I couldn't remember when Omega came out, and I'm like, I can't if this is not this year, and I put this in here, somebody's gonna come and blow up my spot. You know what I mean for being an asshole. So, beta. one of the questions, beta. Sorry, beta. Yeah. Um, one of the questions that we got a lot on that video was like, how do we get the Barrel King? Because people knew, hey, I can't get the 13th Colony. Or I had a Jack 12 or I didn't get a Jack 12 because those are the only two bottles that beat it this year. in a true blind, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, I got to tell you guys about a fucking panic moment. A wild <laughs> panic moment in one moment here. But it's regarding our lineup of the whiskey of the year. But that came in third. And the, only, the answer was like, if you're a gold member uh, at Barrel King, then you can get these. Like I got this literally, I got this as a gold member one month, right? Do you yeah. guys sell any of the gold member stuff in the shop? Like in your out of your guys' shop? So great question. Um, if it doesn't sell through in the membership, okay. then it's available one to two months after members have access to it. Okay. So so everybody has time to get it. Everybody has time to get it. Members are really our focus, though. Yeah. Um, everything goes to members first. But, but okay. with an exception. Mm -hmm. So like so like last month, for instance, though, say gamma. We, we sold Gamma, it was one per, um, but then everybody wanted more. Mm -hmm. So we aren't actually going to release that out of the shop because we know the members want it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to bring it back to the store probably in March mm -hmm. and okay. then let, let, let it throw through members again. So if we know that it's something that members want, mm -hmm. we're going to hold on to it and we're going to release it. Uh, like March will be like really like your Christmas in July, basically. And we're yeah. just like a release a bunch of odds and ends and a couple new ones too. Mm -hmm. So I love that. That's yep. perfect though. Okay, Luke, put it in chat. I'm just gonna pin it. At, nope, that's the wrong pin. I'm an idiot. One second, Luke, put another thing in chat. All right. So at the top is the barrelking.com link if you want it. And then if you go there, you can figure it, you can figure out how to how to join. Yep. Uh, on the store. Mm -hmm. It'll take you to the membership options. Perfect. Jay Martinez says, do they ship? do yes we work with a distributor and we can ship um to all 50 states except utah so 49 states freaking mormons i swear oh, to god <laughs> scary. jesus was a big wine guy okay that's yeah, funny <laughs> one time at a wedding 
<laughs> I was so there was a there was a obviously I, I think you guys know I grew up hyper extremely religious very religious and um, I was sitting in a wedding we had uh, me and my wife Ricky were going to a church at the time long time ago we we're going to this church we loved the pastor there he's great he seemed like a great guy um, so we had him marry us because like hey he's a cool guy younger guy a little bit not so much brimstone and fire more like hey Jesus pr- probably loved most people type shit right. And um, he did a wedding for some of our friends. So we went to the wedding and then the wedding reception. And he was sitting at a table all by himself. And I had just gotten into whiskey at this point a little bit, like dabbling. And uh, he's sitting by himself at this table. And this, this, our friends were like partiers, right? So this reception was like a party. It wasn't like a <laughs> have the pastor there. It was like a we're everybody's fucking tanked, right? <laughs> yeah. And so I walk over and I sit down at this table with him because we had had a good relationship and I sat down at the table with him and I had a whiskey in my hand and I sat on the table and I said, how are you? And he said, I'm good. How are you? And I said, I'm good. And I said, is this whole thing like super uncomfortable? Like, well, I don't know any of your opinions or beliefs when it comes to alcohol. Right. He's like, no, he's like, actually I sit at a table. I find a table that's alone. I want to see if anybody will come talk to the pastor at receptions like this that are more amplified by alcohol. Right. And so we start chatting or whatever. And he had talked about why he doesn't drink. And it had act weirdly nothing to do with religion. Mm-hmm. And at one point he goes, listen, anybody tells you Jesus didn't party a little bit, probably lying to you. And I go, really? And he goes, tell me this man's just turning water into wine constantly for his friends. And he's not having any, <laughs> like, there's no way nobody's drunk. And I was like, kind of got a point. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe we should drink more. And then he's like, I don't know if that's what I'm going, <laughs> you know. But um, okay, so quickly, I'm gonna TLDR this because it didn't make the video cut for whiskey of the year. My wife had poured all of those for us. We switched our scale this year. Last year we did like this compared to this compared to we did a blind of four or five whiskeys at once, and then it was the just the top two move on, right? Mm-hmm. That felt like very much like that was um, comparative rather than like, how good is this bottle of whiskey, right? So this year it was put all of the proofs in groups and then like drink this bottle and then give it a score one to a hundred, like simple as that, right? So this time it was very individual, like drink whiskey A, 76, drink whiskey B, take your time or whatever, but that's a 64, right? Mm-hmm. Then at the end, Sean and I each give it a score. We had up that score. That's how we get our, our, our uh, top, you know, 18. So we did that, but my wife poured all of these samples. Well, she poured five and then five and then five or six, six, six. We went through it. Sean's like reading them to me on video. We're filming this. I'm setting them on the table. Like I set the barrel. Sean's like number 14 barrel king. I'm like, I fucking doubt it. You know, I'm like, (laughs) I don't know which (laughs) bottle it is, but I know I've been drinking this in my shower. (laughs) You know what I mean? <laughs> Which means it's probably like, I like it a lot, you know? <laughs> and there's a dent in it. Like, I don't revisit a bottles often. We have, like, there's too many different bottles. So it's usually like, if there's a dent in it, I've been fucking hammering <laughs> that one. So we get 12, like, Stag 22A. And I'm like, what the fuck did you? I thought Stag 22A <laughs> might win this year. You know what I mean? I'm like, all right. So we just keep going down the line. 10th is this, 10th. We get, there's five bottles we haven't put on the table. One of them is Angel's Envy Cast Strength, right? That's not great. It's not good. Sean loves it. It's fine. Whatever. I gave it like a 60-something. Sean gave it like an 80. So I'm like, buddy, there's no fucking way that Angel's Envy Cast Strength beat most of the shit at the bottom of this table right now. We start looking through it. I look through the list Ricky wrote, and I'm like, buddy, if we flip this list upside, this one sheet, which had, which was the, only the high proof one, which is the stag, your guys's angels, heavy cast rank, whatever. I go, if we flip this upside down, this would all make sense. So we go back. Ricky comes out. We go back. She's like, I was in a hurry. I must've poured that one right to left instead of left to right. Like all the other ones, like an actual psychopath. She must be a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> we had, 13th colony double oak in 10th place because the list was upside down we had um jack 12 in like eighth or sixth and we had barrel king like 14th we went back and looked at it because because in the blind 
on, I say unfortunately, but honestly, fortunately, in the blind, Sean and I both knew exactly where Angel's Envy cast strength was because it was such it was one of the only finished whiskeys in the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. So we're like, no, Angel's Envy cast strength was five, and you have five ranked where the Barrel King is right now, which doesn't make any sense. So we go back, dude, all upside down, have to reshoot the whole fucking thing, huge disaster, <laughs> oh and I started panicking. I'm like. How the fuck are like literally probably three or four of my favorite bottles bottom ten? You know, they're <laughs> under top ten of the year. And then like Angel's Levy Casting is about to come in fucking first or second right now. <laughs> Holy shit. I was sweating. Sean was like panicking. It was a whole thing. <laughs> it's crazy. This isn't gonna go over well. <laughs> Dude, I, I at one point and it got cut out of the video because that part obviously that took 15 minutes for us to go through this. We had Sean cut it. He did a good job cutting it. He cuts it out. At one point, I said. If you told me that this list was backwards, I'd just believe you blatantly. Like, I would blindly just Words. take your word for it because all of the bottles at the bottom feel like the bottles that would have been at the top. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, thankfully, we got, like, we scooby doo the shit out of it and figured <laughs> it all out. But holy shit, dude. I was like, we're about to lose all credibility. It's all gone. Every bit of it is gone, dude. <laughs> Angel Sandy Cash Rings better than Stag, ECVP, Barrel King, 13 County, Jack 12. Like, every bot, you know what I'm like? There's no fucking way, dude. There's no way. But I'm glad you guys caught it. Yeah. Dude, what was <laughs> do you still drink other people's whiskey or do you only go barrel king right because of the because there's enough work to be doing right now? Yeah. So so literally, um Barrel King, I drink just for work. And uh I do drink, I mean, for fun. I drink virtue. I drink Blom Brothers. If I, I have some old Blom oh. Brothers. Oh I shit! Drink. Don't those are not in the same um, category. Well, no, but honestly, I don't know, man. One and two. I mean, they're big old. fan of one and two. That's all I've big got. Big fan of two. Big fan of two, dude. Honestly, um, big fan of two. So, what else do I drink? I drink wine. wine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You gave us really great wine while we were there. That wine was fantastic. Probably was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. It was. It was very good. That steak was incredible. <laughs> was, ate the whole was, thing. Like, you ate every you bit did. of it. I you ate blew my entire. mind. <laughs> then I realized you're like a power lifter in your past life. I'm like, oh, it makes sense. Dude. He's just up and on the protein. <laughs> just eat constantly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I drink. like, so when, like I'm putting together a blend, dude. I drink so much that I hate. To just mm -hmm. like, I don't want to do it for fun. You know, like, mm -hmm. which I hate to mm -hmm. say that, but it's just the truth. Like, like the, Well, your like, work. It's your work. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll, yeah i'll drink every night for and all day for weeks and i'm like oh man i get a week off yeah without a doubt rachel what do you do you do you partake in you just wine or not not much at all so the philly blends actually what converted me to be a whiskey drinker um that's my like claim to fame is that <laughs> that one was the yeah. conversion for me um which I philly was it strawberry it was a strawberry yeah it's so good though um and I've tasted everything that's been bottled or even things throughout the process. Yeah, she tastes everything. But um, I can say whether I like something or not, but my palate is nowhere near Jared's, Sydney's, Joey's. Um, so, yeah, wine is is more my speed. I love wine. Yeah, I'm like starting to buy bottles of wine and then try to figure out like which ones are worth saving and which ones are like, now nah, fuck it, just open it. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a rabbit hole. I don't think I should do it. <laughs> no. Panic drink no. everything. I'd panic. Just <laughs> panic drink everything. Pop yeah. them all. Yes. Yeah. It might go bad. Gosh. I can't I, get into it. I keep up like on the I do buy a lot of bottles because I want to understand. Like if something's like real big deal and everybody's going crazy over it, I do buy a bottle of whatever that is. And I do and because I want to understand what people want, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I do R and D. I have so many bottles with like four ounces missing, hundreds. And, sure. Uh, so I, I do do that. Mm -hmm. so. I don't think that's a bad idea, though. I really yeah. don't. I don't think it's just market. I know it sounds weird because yeah, it's, it's like market drinking. Research. It's yeah. market. It's our. It's our. It's research. Mm -hmm. Trying trying to spot like trends and things and and really like yeah like the whole thirteenth colony and like it it kind of it gave me inspiration for gamma. You sure. Know? So I was like, well, everybody's this shit. So let me see if I can do that, you know? And so, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to try that one. Yeah, oh, man. Good. I'm so excited. 
<laughs> the the rye that you guys did this month was phenomenal. That's good too. And then this was this showed up with the the rye, and we did our first ever pick. So we had a group at at the the spot, right? And um, everybody's about to learn about the changes of the spot this Thursday. So on YouTube. So, uh, but we had a. Uh, we had I had this in the rye there. And I was like, these are the rules. Everybody walked in. I had poured bourbon free for everybody. Like a little acclimation, right? Nobody's had whiskey yet. Like a little acclimation. Yeah. You guys are going to do a pick. This is weirdly, weird acclimation pork. It's not something you can pick today. We don't have any 20% rye for people to pick from. But I was like, you cannot drink this. Because I, I mean, dude, look at how much is gone. But... um. <laughs> I was like, you can't drink this and you can't drink the rye until we're done because I don't, you're going to fucking ruin everything. It's like there's, I mean, there's levels to shit and there's yeah. ages to shit and there's, you know, finishing and the ability to curate something like that. There, that, This is an ability of skill, something that you guys do really well, which like I was fans of you as people, the, the whiskey made me fans of the brand. Right. And so this, I was like, we, we're going to, drink this afterwards because i want you guys to try it because i think it's fucking awesome mm -hmm. but i was like you guys we're gonna drink like five to seven year old stuff some of it's weird ass wheat whiskey from cedar ridge some of it's fucking you know this i got this real weird project cooking right now it's spanish cedar and it's fucking weird man now here's it's the thing I'm hoping, the cigar, I'm hoping it cooks in with the cigar really well um because we got yeah. we got some cigar related business to do in mid-feb and but we'll see but i'm like we're gonna try a bunch of cool shit we'll try some like real normal mgp we'll try whatever and then afterwards after we're done we'll get into like big bottles right like we'll pull out really cool shit and then we'll drink into that and dude this ended up it's funny because klein my buddy who's real i'm gonna call him picky i think picky is the right word very uh you met klein, klein was down there but klein's very like much the guy and it's not a problem it's it's generally welcome like i'll hand him something like truthfully like what it mm -hmm. thought yeah you know, like because yep. Klein will be the one that's like it's missing this it's really yeah. good it's this thing is fucked opinionated yeah for sure hyper opinionated and yeah. it's super yeah. Yeah. It's super great when you want an honest opinion from yeah. someone right yeah. so he's there he had texted me because he saw the patron post about when i was talking about this bottle and he goes you said it's that good and I go, I'll, he goes, bring it to the pick. And I go, you can drink it after the pick. And he goes, okay. <laughs> he comes in after the pick and we hadn't lit any cigars yet. And he walks back and he take and he, and he had it in the glass. He goes, that's fucking really good. <laughs> and I was like, I told you, dude, like, <laughs> I know I get, ex I get very excited about stuff. Right. But I don't often get really excited about like average stuff. I get really excited about something that I find very cool or unique yeah. or interesting. And I'm like, just cause I'm excited doesn't mean it's not, Apps actually great. He's like, no, but you get excited a lot. And I'm like, when it's great. Like, that's the thing, right? <laughs> like, I'm not excited every fucking time I go that's pick so up a funny. bottle of Buffalo Trace. That shit's good. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, man. I, I had somebody tell me that too. They're like, Dan gets excited. I do. <laughs> I'm like, I want it to be true though. You know, I'm an excitable person. Yeah. <laughs> I'm passionate. Fun, yeah. What are we doing, dude? You're fucking bored your whole life just. I'm just mad the whole time, dude. There's no way I can't. There's no. Way. I refuse to, dude. I refuse yeah. to do that. I'm with you. Yeah. There's no way. All right, real quick. Hop Hayes, super chat. Thank you, buddy. Super question time. Why can't we, in Indy, get these legit MGP products? Is it like local NBA blackout? You can. Hop Hayes. They just explained that actually the only state that they don't, uh, they can't move product to is Utah right now. Um, the Mormons hate the whiskey. And if you go out and ask High West, they'll tell you they hate it too, which is wild. <laughs> but Hop Hayes, thanks for super chat, buddy. Um, but yeah, you guys, you guys moved the product 49 states, which is wild. Tons of, I mean, that's it's basically the whole fucking country. So, yeah. um, okay, listen, we're gonna at some point this year we're gonna do another project, please. And Let's I can't it. wait because here's okay. Nobody knows the story. Matt had. Kingslayer two and three, or I'm sorry, Whiskey King two and three done when we were out there mm -hmm. with you guys. I had come up with this Kingslayer idea before I knew two and three were done. That's funny. And I'm like, Matt launched Whiskey King. We're going to launch Kingslayer. Matt will launch Whiskey King two. We'll launch, you know, fucking rock your shit, whatever, whatever we want to call it. <laughs> and then 
I was like, we're gonna, and then Matt was like, and then when we're out there, he's like, dude, Matt already, Matt's done with two and three. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> <laughs> but we gotta, I'm so excited to like, I think, and I don't know if this is how it works for all of the picks or all the blends or all the projects you guys do. You, pr It would be great if, for you guys to talk about it. If a group or somebody approaches you guys, are people welcome to come do a pick? Is it like a invitation thing? How do you guys manage that right now? So, I mean, I'm not, so there's a long, I'm, and I'm not, I don't want to seem evasive eva or yeah. evasive or like snooty, Yeah, but it's like, we just <laughs> owe so much to our members. Mm -hmm. That makes okay. sense. So like, um, so like for instance, um, I got this, we definitely will take any re like it requests. We're probably going to be more have to work with somebody if it's more like a uh, charity mm -hmm. um i'd be i i have a I'd, ha, I'd be more interested in those if you have a group and you want to do something uh I, i'm not trying to ask you to to ask me so i can turn you down but let me get you on a list because you just honestly it there's a lot of things like if we are moving man i, oh, I'm, I almost hate we haven't did anything official but we are moving towards membership I mean, only, and then like, we're going to work with you, of course, and people we've worked with in the past. Um, we don't want to just shut that off. Um, sure. But bringing in new people right now, you know, I just, I hate to say that. That sounds so terrible. That's not bad. Let, you know, you get, like the first time we were, the first time we ever went into the Starlight pick, Starlight's got a met, seemingly a pretty much metric shit ton of whiskey, right? Mm -hmm. And the first time we went over to Starlight, it was the first time we met anybody over there. They were really great. We got along. We hit it off with them. Um, and Christian at the time was like, hey, it's there's a real chance that we almost like shut this off to people that we like didn't hit it off with. You know what I mean? They're like, we're trying to get our barrel age, like our barrel program that people are picking from to a certain age, right? And it's not four or five. It was like seven or eight. I can't, mm -hmm. I can't remember which, somewhere up there. And they're like, the only way to do that is do less picks. We need like barrels left, right? We need them left behind. We need them to sit here for another almost twice as long, four, four or five years. I think like there's something to that. They have a lot of whiskey that's four or five years old. They're just trying to hit a goal too. Same way as you, you know what I mean? I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think it's, if you're in, you're in for right now. Hopefully somebody we can open this up and you get, everybody can have a heyday and yep. do whatever you want, but. And that's also kind of part of it. I mean, there's so many layers to what I said. Mm -hmm. So, like, I mean, just to be honest, like, we might we might hit a situation where, like, last August when everybody did picks, we were up against the wall. Sure, we were we were late on some people that, and they were friends, and they said, "Don't worry about it." And I was like, "Man, I just don't want to carry it no more." So we did a whole bunch of picks, and we got rid of some of that debt. So sure. that that is definitely a possibility in the future. Um, but 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 really, right now. I mean, when, I, when we go out and try to get funded for barrels, which, you know, we're, you know, we, we don't make much. We haven't made much. We don't pay ourselves much. We are just now starting to see membership members move to a place where we can actually start to take some like normal pay. So, which is awesome. It, it, it's it's amazing. Like we're we're like we're looking at going. Oh my god. Yeah. We might be able yeah. to raise our salary from forty thousand to forty five. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, so Progress. that said, when yeah. I when I go and try to get funded for barrels or get somebody to say hey give me a million dollar loan so we need it you know for yeah. barrels they're not gonna you know i guess it's easier for them to do that if we have great great member numbers versus you know we did this much revenue anybody can go do revenue right, right? but it's right. the the people that are you know saying i'm gonna come back next month and support you and next month and support mm -hmm. you and that's really what I mean, I think drives confidence in somebody, you know, letting us use their money, you know. And uh, so does that make sense? Kind of it makes perfect sense because you have a you guys have a built in community to the brand. Yep. Rachel, I'm sorry. Did I, I didn't want to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, 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 no. You're you're great. I was just agreeing with what you said. You're agreeing. Mm -hmm. OK, so I think it's special. I think that that um, I think that having a built in. 
like you the the revenue thing like can come and go in like a yes. public market not that you don't want that right there's yeah old number seven is the whole reason for jack mm-hmm. daniel's cool projects yeah. at this point mm-hmm. right Coy hill is because of old number seven it's one way or another right yeah. it has to be um but that being said there was a point in time there ain't no fucking Coy hill dude we got we're trying to figure that out you know we're trying to figure out how to get old number seven in somebody's house or a bar yeah. Yeah. Or whatever it is, so that someday, Mike Mike from Penelope was great on that. Like his understanding of that was so great. Where it was like, we do this because this is going to take care of us for these projects, and we want to do these projects because these are enthusiast projects or mm-hmm. they're more interesting to us or whatever it is. So we do this, and then that feeds this, and we're all you know. There's yeah. a teeter totter there. So yeah, and if you look at what it takes, like so, there's there's to really play that game and, and, to, and to get into distribution and do all those, like do the shelf game. I don't like, I don't do well. Like I don't do well dealing with retail owners and distributors. Sure. They all act like they got you under their heel. Sure. And I just like, I'm just been in construction my whole life and I'm just like ready to like relax. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, so I guess to do that, I think you need a whole different, like, tool bag and like for us we have seven full-time employees that that handle what we have and we and that's i mean that's like no distribution no retail we do like we just did some of the grillos we might have something sits around forever we might do a retail because we can distribute or we can uh wholesale retail and manufacture here in missouri so we can do that so i guess if you look at what it takes to cover our bases right now uh I mean, we're like I said, seven full time employees. Yeah. You know, health insurance paid, real deal. But it's for us to go do even one distributor right now, we would have to almost create a whole nother department. Like, mm-hmm. um, you know what I mean? Yeah, no. I mean, well, yeah. and you guys also like, I, it's you guys aren't in a, a super convenient spot. I was going to say everybody should just go there. Everybody should still go there, like make the hike. The reason being, like you meet your guys' team and you guys have like a real special team. Um, everybody's got like people, everybody's got, you know, I know like liquor store owner, right? He's got an employer too. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, it's whatever. You know what I mean? If they take off, yeah, see you later. You know, I'll find another. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those, right? But yeah, when you go here. to where you guys are at, yeah. yeah, it's not, it doesn't feel like that. Doesn't look like that. Doesn't seem like that. Joey's on his fucking day off. Sean fucks up your entire label application machine. Joey co- drives his ass in on his day off to try to fix it for like four hours, dude. Yeah. yeah. I, like, Sydney, like, your guys' team, the people that we met while we were there, fucking phenomenal. Heart, like, rider dies. Loyal as hell, seemingly. Yeah. Just yeah. even from, like, yeah. a two, three-day visit. You can just tell that it's like a family. You guys built, like, a family inside of that Barrel King mm-hmm. building and inside of that that brand. It's fucking beautiful to see it. It feels that way. It does. It, I'm glad it does. It, it like I said, we weren't there for a real long time, and it felt just like that though every day, all the time. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it was we very are cool. So so very lucky with the team that we have. Um, when Claire had passed, we literally went maybe two weeks without even coming in the shop, doing anything whiskey related, and they all kept everything going there was not one call of like hey you know can you tell me how to do this they legit just kept things going so we could handle what we needed to do and right they're just amazing amazing people being able to count on people like in that yes right like in the time where you're like i don't fucking care figure it out you know what i mean in the time where not literally none of it mattered at all Mm -hmm. zero and to have those people like in your corner to be mm-hmm. like, it doesn't fucking matter. Do not. Yeah. I don't, yeah. We'll figure it the fuck out. We'll burn this yeah. place down. Before we <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know I mean? Exactly. I'll, we got it. Then we'll rebuild it before they get back to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like Joey's up there fucking putting trust in the roof. <laughs> I'm a hundred percent sure without a doubt. I could see it. Yes. <laughs> but like I do, I think having mm-hmm. those people in your, that's a, that's a, that's a very distilleries often when you go to them, have really cool people that seemingly are pretty happy to be at work. Mm-hmm. What you know, but it really is truly one of those things where you go somewhere, everybody's happy. You go somewhere, everybody's family. Those are different. 
-hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. When you go somewhere in everybody's family, that generally means the people who set that up or the people, leadership, whatever, whatever the correct wording is. That means that you guys fucking killed it. Like you guys did the right thing. You guys are clearly good, like at running that. And because they seem happy as fuck. I watch. I also Joey's got. I can eat his diet, dude. I watch this man pick up a fucking bottle filler. Oh yeah, get another seven fifty ml out of it. You know what I mean? He's the baddest fucker I've ever met. Yeah. Period. I've, I've worked with him for like a decade. Oh, no yeah, wonder. Pick up refrigerators and fucking walk him downstairs and shit. <laughs> Dude, I'm pretty sure I watch. Joey moved a piece of art van furniture twelve years ago from Missouri, walked it up the fucking <laughs> like. I just on his back, just backpacked uh-huh. it the whole yep. way. No, you guys have an incredible team. I love it so much. Uh-huh. Um, and I think that's something like I've said for a really long time, but like, and there's, there's like a balance. There's ebb and flow to the idea of like, I want to work with the people that I love. I want to work with friends or, you know, mm-hmm. um, cause I know there's downsides. You have to have conversations you don't want to have. And they're your friend. You got like something happen. Also your friend, not just, you just work with them. But I also think, like, what a great way to, like, you know somebody better. You trust them more. You can put them in a spot where they're going to succeed because you've known them for long enough to know that, hey, they're not going to be good at that. And that's okay. They don't need to be because I don't – if I put them over there, I fucked up, right? I'm yeah. the idiot. So I think it's cool. Yeah. Um, let's catch up on this, and then let's talk about Porter real quick, if you guys don't mind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sullivan. Mormons are wild, man. Don't okay whiskey, but they do soaking. Wild shit. They're super <laughs> wild. Super wild. You guys know what soaking is? No. Yeah, super inappropriate. <laughs> super inappropriate. No. Mormons aren't allowed to have sex before. I think it's before they're married, so they they can lay in a way in which there has been penetration. Okay. But you're not allowed to move. So there is penetration, but they're not moving. But you cannot. You can't. Fiz- it's oh possible. my god, that's so interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I swear this is real, and I know this is real. Or like on top of each other. I I don't know if position. I don't know the rules on the positions. I do know (laughs) you're allowed to. You know everything else. You're allowed to get in there. You're not allowed to wiggle around too much. (laughs) That's funny. Don't enjoy it. Don't get too excited. (laughs) There, there's this whole rumor that. They they pay like their roommates to go under the mattress and like bounce like kick them because then they're not moving. Oh it's a wild dude. Utah's a fucking crazy place. That's so interesting. Oh my goodness. Bob Glass, I he excited waiting with two G's for my BK email. Bob Bob's, tanked. Bob's very Bob. drunk. <laughs> Bob's party. Rachel and Jared from Sir Boyer himself. I finally signed up. Excited about it. Debated about it for a while. I love your offering, so I'm all in. Thanks, Thank you, Mark. Mark. Boyer's a good guy. Ivan, hashtag Team Dan, way better stream without freeloader. Sean, thank you for the 34 <laughs> months. Great. 34 months. <laughs> Rachel Jared, thanks for the BK glasses. Thad Brill. Sure. All right. Only Dan can talk about it on YouTube. Whoa. There's like, you guys act like we haven't had way wilder conversations on this YouTube <laughs> channel than that. There's no way. Okay. We have to talk about Matt. We got to have, yeah. we got to talk about Matt. Um, Porter's going through some shit. Obviously, the the if nobody's seen the video that he made a video about his mouth, and he needs a l- bunch of help and a bunch of work. He needs like literally needs new teeth, which is wild to say. And, like not a joke at all. And um, cut. Come to find out, if people don't know, new teeth cost a fucking fortune, which is crazy. Uh, so you had reached out. And we're like, hey, uh, I want to help take care of Matt. And I was like, anything for you guys, Matt, we're all good. Like, just let me know. And you were like, I think I've blended this thing. And as somebody who talks to Jared on a basis enough to say, I know how often, I feel like I know how often he says something about his own shit. Jared doesn't often, like, I'll be like, I loved this thing, but I'm glad you like it. He's not like, I think I, I think it's pretty good or it felt like I did a good job. He's not the guy that like compliments himself even when he should be. Um, and when you said, I think this might be the best thing I've ever blended. And I was like, I'm so fucking excited for this idea. <laughs> so Jared, long story short, you had said, I'm going to bottle 200 bottles of this blend. And then let's see if we can sell it. All of the proceeds go to Matt, like all of them, which would in theory help Matt and help take care of Matt's 
into like his mouth, which is incredible. Um, because it the amount of money was an asininely high, a lot of digits. You know, like uh, literally a situation that almost any of us would be put in and be like, "What the fuck am I supposed to yeah. do about yeah. that?" You know. So there's way more details than that in Matt's video, and if you want, you can watch that. But um, anyways, so we we had we had decided that hey, let's just you guys are going to be on on Tuesday anyways. Let's just launch it on Tuesday. That's perfect. Because then if, 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 you know, we'll throw it over to patrons and then if patrons, like if it doesn't sell out to patrons, cause it's a lot, if it doesn't sell out to patrons and we'll, we have a whole live stream, we can tell everybody about it and tell everybody well, who it's for and all of it, which is awesome. Like what a beautiful story. Mm-hmm. You guys eating the cost on these barrels, putting a blend together, taking some of this blend out that would have went elsewhere to a membership, to the tasting room, to wherever, donating it realistically, right. To Matt. Um, we launched that to patrons at five o'clock today and in three and a half minutes, the 200 miles were gone, which is one of the most incredible fucking things I've ever been a part of. I, you guys are incredible. Like, thank you for reaching out and being like, Hey, are you in on helping? Cause helping like when you have a, what the fuck are we doing with platforms? If it's not that there's, I, I like, I know that like we're, this has turned into a job and it's turned into a work and it's beautiful work is beautiful job. And it's turned into starting an NDP and it's funded these things mm-hmm. above all else. So like we do fundraisers, at least one fundraiser a year for a family. And in like, when you reached out on this, it was like, this is my fucking favorite thing. You know what I mean? Like this is the thing and I love it. And if you're telling me that this is possibly coming from a <laughs> very humble, non <laughs> in your face person about how good he is at something. He doesn't even, he doesn't even know how good he is at certain things. When you like said, this might be the best thing I've ever blended. I was like, buddy, if you're saying that expect, <laughs> listen, now here's the thing. If it shows up and it's not, I'm going to be, <laughs> 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 but I just want like huge. That's incredible. You two are fucking incredible people. You didn't have to do this for, by any means. There was, there was no like necessary. You just didn't have to, you guys decided to do this. It's fucking incredible. Well, I mean, we couldn't have done it without you and all the support and all the patrons and everybody who donated. It's the same with the Jarrell Stewart and Navia bottle. Um, you know, we we couldn't have personally given that much. And so we did what we could. And then everyone else took it and just ran with it. And it turned into this beautiful, both, both, both for Matt and Navia, it turned into such a beautiful thing. Um, yeah, it's just life changing. Like what you two are it doing. You, oh, well, thank I know you. you say that. You, this is all I did was share with people. All we did was like use our space to share something really fucking cool with other people who would think it was really fucking cool. It's as simple as that, right? The reason that it works is because like we got that group of people, like the junkies families like that, mm-hmm. you know. And I, I'm like, couldn't have been prouder today. Mm-hmm. But my dream was that. I even said in a in a in a chat not here. We <laughs> dropped a, an exceptional series yesterday to patrons. Is a two hundred dollar bottle of whiskey. It's an expensive bottle of whiskey. We dropped the exceptional series yesterday, and then we had this today. And at one point, it was like, listen, if if people don't buy the exceptional, because number one, this is a really good bottle. Number two, it's for Matt. Like, there's a lot of multiple things going on here. We can sell the exceptional series. Like, we just sit, we can sell that next week, whatever, right? Like, we can sell that on live streams. We can deal with that in a different way, whatever. This other thing's like taking care of Matt. You know what I mean? And so it's like, if people are going to jump in on one, like, jump in on the Barrel King, jump in on like the Taking Care of Porter thing. I don't, it's crazy. I, you say, like, you know, we, we wanted to like do what we can. Nobody can just, I mean, not nobody, almost nobody can just hand somebody that amount of money. That's so much money. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. I mean, yeah. This does take away. This is you guys like giving this to Matt, though. This is part of your, this is your business that you are donating to Matt. You guys are giving him that amount of money in the most beautiful fucking way. Truly. We appreciate (laughs) the kind words and everybody supporting us. I mean, we, we know firsthand how much financial support can help with Claire's journey. And, we had always said that, you know, no matter where we ended up, we wanted to be able to, to give back however we could. Yep. And, and this is, this is how we can. Yep. Amazing. Yeah. Truly. Yep. Like, I don't know. I, I, I was so happy to be a part of it. 
I was so happy that you had asked. Like, I said, I was like, always ask for that stuff. Always. This is initially why I had reached out to Jared, was because Matt had shared the, you know, your guys' story, yeah. mm -hmm. and and when Matt shared your guys' story, I was like, dude, any fucking absolutely anything, like right now, and because Matt had mentioned like maybe there's they might do something with like a fundraiser, they might do whatever, mm -hmm. like anything, just immediately, just I'm in, and I don't, it doesn't matter if I know him, doesn't matter. And it's just like we have like we have all these people around us that like minded people that are in love with helping each other. They're in love with helping good people. They're in love with helping families. They're in love with helping kids, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like that. What the fuck are we doing? If it is not that there is just not enough other not the other stuff is just not as important. We can do this as often as we can. That's beautiful. And I know there is like a limit. Like we can't do this every day. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Everybody's yeah. out of money. <laughs> Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're not doing it sometimes, what are you doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I'm just so happy. I was so ecstatic. Um, I had texted you, Jared, and I said, Hey, like, hey, I hope this goes well. At like yes. 4 58. <laughs> we were sweating. Yeah. I'm like, I hope it goes well. And then you're like, me too. And then like two minutes later, I'm like, there's 20 left. And you said, What? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is that cold red? So we broken? Did it break? Did we break? I was driving home <laughs> from the shop and Sydney texted me and she said, Oh my God, what happened? And I'm like, I don't know what happened. Like, are, are you okay? Was there a car accident? I don't know what <laughs> happened. And she's like, we just sold out. And I was like, no. And Flipping went through my minutes. email, called him. And I was like, holy smokes. Like, yeah, it was beautiful. It was amazing. And then Jared called, of course, dude, here's the thing. I'm in a hardware store, right? I'm trying to get these self tapping metal screws that I need for the shop. I'm in a hardware store. You call me. I left the car running. It goes to Bluetooth. You can't hear me. I can't hear you. You call me back. I get it on. You're like, dude, it, it's gone. And I was like, it's incredible. Like, this is the best thing ever. You know what I mean? I was on the treadmill. Dan, it's gone, Dan. It's Dan. Everybody's like, what are you doing? <laughs> oh that's wild um so real quick before i pull somebody in here um i want you to know that you on the treadmill not as out of breath as me getting a cardboard sign <laughs> that's funny. Really. That's funny <laughs> so all right and entering i call him the final boss the bowser to matt madness one of the most beautiful human beings on the planet one of my favorite human beings i'll ever meet for the rest of my life no matter who i meet next Matthew Porter himself, ADHD whiskey. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey. How are you? If I, if you can hear me, then I'm awesome. Yeah, we can. Heck yeah. Oh boy, you made a guy cry today. You three. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank. You I can't. <laughs> you three and the everyone who purchased a bottle and just holy shit. Um, I don't know. I don't even. I got literally. I, I was uh, headed to pick up the kids today from school, and I got in the truck, and I got a uh, text message that said sold out in three minutes, and I was like, what the, wait, what? Like, I Everybody loves you, man. <laughs> um, That's I what love, it's about. I love all you guys, too. Um, I, like when... I don't know. It's just so, it's so ridiculous. Uh, just I had people I, I had <laughs> Dan and Julia texted me and <laughs> Julie goes wait did it sell on four did it break because the, like the <laughs> it's uh like it's not showing the right inventory there was like a thing and I go no I go, we had people so I got these like ride or dies Luke's in chat right here <laughs> Dustin Ballou these guys like always track inventory on like all of our drops right mm -hmm. and so they'll go to the site and like just keep refreshing see what like the what's left what you can add to cart type thing and so they do it on like all of the monday like when we do patron drops and they were doing it luke you you guys got to meet luke he's like the mm -hmm. fucking most intensely intelligent graded excel sheets and everything anywhere near him that's ever. right here actually Dude, <laughs> holy shit yeah. luke literally is going 150 146 143 138 dude of uh, the whole discord is this <laughs> and it's this close to number <laughs> luke was literally the how found out he goes it's gone then there's like a bunch of these gifts in this discord and i was just like it was all of the weight of like 
if there was usually we're helping people that we don't know when we do fundraisers right mm -hmm. and then often afterwards we meet somebody in the family or we meet them and it becomes like an incredible experience yeah. right yes this like started as us helping somebody we already knew we were in love with mm -hmm. you know and so it was one of those things that was like i've never been nervous for a fundraiser because i didn't know them ahead of time mm -hmm. right so if it goes well that's incredible and i'm so happy that we can just like send them money or give them a check or we can do something that hopefully just lifts at just like you just forgot, right? Like about one part of all of it. Yep. And today was like, man, I hope if this doesn't go well, I'm going to be truly, I'm going to feel like a failure kind of. You know, I'm going to be let down. <laughs> this bottle yeah. was fucking incredible. Nobody that gets it's going to be upset about it. I swear to God. I literally started telling people, I'll fucking buy them off you don't like it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just, but it's one truly. It's one of those things where it's like that was today was an incredible experience, Matt. I hope you understand that like people are madly in love with you and you're a fucking incredible person, dude. Yeah. It's a weird. It's a such a weird thing. It's I I I literally don't know. I don't know what to say because nothing nothing that I could say means literally how I feel. Like there's no words to express like my appreciation for everyone and um. I will, I'll make it up to you guys over the next several years with whatever I can possibly do um, to to make cool shit and to smile a lot. And um, you know, I've been a super dedicated Barrel King employee for a month now, and I feel like you know they really take care of their employees. <laughs> like, holy crap! Right? Like, what the hell? Do you guys? Do you guys, Dan? Did you have you ever watched Breaking Bad? Yes. So, um, the brother-in-law who kills Tuco, remember that? Yep. And then they gifted him Tuco's grill, and he kept it on his desk. <laughs> I was like, I better it's not. Bad. I was like, do I've got to give you back my my teeth? If, if they, just, <laughs> if they just keep them on their desk to, <laughs> so everyone know not to mess with. Not he didn't ask with. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's just like Matt's teeth right there on the desk next to That's incredible. You know, the funny thing is, is when I was on the phone with Jared, we were talking about it and I was like, what if, cause Matt, cause in your video, you were like, I, I've been self, this is something I've been self-conscious of oh, in yeah. the past for a very That's... long time. And I told Jared to go, man, you imagine this gives Matt like bumps Matt's comp. Matt's unstoppable. <laughs> like you bump Matt's confidence. <laughs> it's fucking over, dude. Cam out. If forever, <laughs> already kind of is. <laughs> Matt, top me. I'll go back to second. I'm okay with second. You know, we're I'm I'm good with that. But it's like one of those things where it's like, what a cool thing. Everybody has um something they're self conscious about, right? Like I'm an mm. insecure person in certain aspects of my life for sure. And like we often laugh about them or joke about them or whatever. We don't often talk about them seriously in a public platform. You made that video, which was very public platform, and that video is done pretty damn well too. On top of that, because of the way you titled it and thumbnailed it, you sharing that, and then like this is the result, dude. Is like how fucking beautiful that well, in in you sharing this was the turnaround. I, I, I've said, no matter what, the, I had never expected this. I, I in my head was trying to plan like how to possibly like mm. come up with something to get to get some of it paid for. Um, possibly get like half of it done through like financing and then like uh, just doing the bottle giveaways and stuff. But like, I never expected uh, this. This is insane. But I had to make the video because I'm in front of a camera for a living and like Connor McGregor can disappear for three years and <laughs> then he shows an Instagram photo of him in a Speedo on a yacht with the new grill. <laughs> Yeah, and, pe and people are like, "Wow, he's packing and got yeah. a brand new grill." That's <laughs> but like, all of a sudden, one day I'm just going to show up in front of a camera with either no teeth or like different teeth, or like, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's not like there weren't going to be questions anyway. So just like, going to address it because I was told that it was going to have to happen. Something was going to have to happen soon, regardless. So sure, um, it might as well you know get out in front of it and tell everyone, hey. You know, gonna look different. Well, you should. You should have done. I don't. I don't. No, I don't listen. You should have done. I think that you managed that. I think you handled that the correct way. I think that sharing that. Listen, outside of like people being like, Matt's teeth look different. That's what the comment you're gonna. You know, what I mean? like who gives it, dude? 
the, I get comments that are like, damn, put on 20 pounds, huh? Like, fuck you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I did. Okay, I ate snickerdoodles until 3 a.m. last night, and I put on a <laughs> some weight. But it is one of those things for, like, it's it's for your health, buddy. Like it's it's yeah. the reason that this was important had nothing to do with a YouTube comment that said Matt's teeth look different. The intention, no. the purpose of this was truly for you to be a healthy person, for you to be happy. Getting rid of an insecurity is incredible on the way to you being a healthy person. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's uh, gonna it's gonna be a life changer. I mean, it's now like thanks to everyone who everyone going. I just amazing people, everybody. But now it's real. Like holy shit! Like they're gonna rip every tooth out of my face. <laughs> Dude, you'll be asleep, right? It'll be asleep. I I had a conversation with a friend the other day who's going through some pretty crazy shit in his life, and I was blown away. Like, and I was like, "Oh my god, dude! Like, why haven't we talked about this?" And he's like, "Well, I just want to talk to you know." It's called because I saw your video about your teeth, and I was like. Are you kidding me? Like, with all the shit you got going on, that's what you're worried about? And he goes, to be honest, I kind of rather go through what I'm going through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. I was like, you take it back right this second. <laughs> uh, but, um, no. That's I cool, though, because that video helped somebody else. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, people. that's that's the person that reached yeah. out to you. That doesn't count all the, that doesn't count all of the people that didn't. Yeah. So. But I, I just I didn't want to inter interrupt. Um, you guys were you uh, listen, Jared and Rachel. You two have been doing a tremendous job listening to Dan tonight. Fair and thank you. Yeah, Dan provides the easiest interviews in whiskey too. He does. He does. <laughs> he does. It's great. So why why do you think Don sometimes people come back, dude? <laughs> right. Yeah, I I talk over everybody every thirty five <laughs> seconds. I say something like, ah, ah. "You just you just make it flow so effortlessly." And I didn't want to interrupt that, but I needed to come on here and say thank you to literally every person who's s said anything nice, said anything at all. Um, Bob, those bottles donated to that GoFundMe, which is absolutely insane. Um, Bill Cavanaugh for setting it up, Jared and Rachel and. Dan, not Sean, but everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Like, dude, dude, hold on. Did you not know? You didn't, you missed the news or? Oh, I saw it. He had a baby. <laughs> That's dude, like, it's did you, literally, uh, it literally, it just looks just like it's actually terrifying. I had a okay. way creepier picture, but they wouldn't do it. So that had to, that wasn't <laughs> cheap, was it? That had to be kind of expensive. It was like $170. <laughs> That's so worth it. It's way too much money. Uh, I thought it would be 20. I swear to God. When they sent me the quote, I'm like, what are you kidding? So For you can actually, cardboard? you can get some Velcro to attach to where the baby's at. So every once in a while, you can just have them holding something different. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> idea. And the bubble can say other things. That's funny. So that's you can good. just reuse it, you know? Yeah, no, that's great. I can just have them over my shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Poor guesses. Right in your ear. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. I will say that's better than your Trump impression. So it sounded like a parrot, though, didn't it? A little bit. Kind a of little bit. <laughs> yeah. it did. Kind of, kind of piratey. Uh, Matt, no. now that you're here, dude, let's just do this. How excited are you? Work for Barrel King. I watched the live stream with you and Jared. Watched you interview Jared. Heard Jared doesn't watch a lot of the new Fast and the Furious movies. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Also yeah, enjoyed kinda... Stag, which is not surprising. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, looking back on that, maybe should have asked him more about Barrel King, huh? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's, it, hey, you know what? It's just it's an it was an introduction. I just like you know we're learning. I actually loved it. I I truly loved it. I, I loved like the random questions a lot because mm -hmm. it was fun and way off topic. So, mm -hmm. I kind of want to do that with other people too. Just. Ask them random things. Mm -hmm. I think that your uh, ladder game that you made is one of the coolest things ever. Oh, the step ladder? I like yeah. that a lot. Um, since you're the reigning Matt Madness champion, yeah, I'll break the news now. Sure. Matt Madness 2024 is step ladder competition. You're damn right it is. Where's he going? I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. oh. oh my goodness. <laughs> 
Don't think I don't got the strap ready. <laughs> Sing is lives near me at all times. I when I'm breathing, it is near me. When I'm sleeping, near me. I guess I'm breathing while I'm sleeping. <laughs> it looks. Official. It's always here, dude. It's always here. People looks, believe looks it. Good. It looks fantastic. Look at that. Just I earned that, dude. And I'm going to be honest. Next year, I'm going to bury Cam. He'll never compete again. So <laughs> <laughs> bury him. <laughs> The whole, the whole sword thing is stuck in my mind. I remember you pull out the sword and started doing like sword tricks and shit when you won. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. yeah, I did. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah. I won a sword on a live stream in a different blind. Oh. Somebody had sent a sword as whoever won got the sword. <laughs> and so we named the sword the omen. And uh now that is my sword. So when I won this, I pulled the sword out to show Jason that I slayed him like a freaking Disney princess story. <laughs> So I don't have any regrets, which is wild as a 34 year old man. I'd act this way, but mm. you're young. You're a baby. Oh, dude. You guys ever look back and be like, holy shit. How do we get to whatever age we're all at? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. It's I don't, wild. I don't, I don't age in my brain. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -mm. That's the, that's why it's so, I think that's why I'm so confused by it. Yeah. Cause I feel well, like I'm just like, whatever. When you're you know? a kid, you're like, when I'm a grown up, but yeah. like you never cross over into being a grown up. It's like you're just an older kid mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. You know, you it's wild. Looking for mm -hmm. liver transplants in South America <laughs> and, <laughs> and new teeth in Colorado. You know? I'm, I'm just a kid looking for a liver transplant. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> what what you could know? you have done to it in that few years? <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> Gosh, dude, I woke up at 2 30 a.m. last night because I had some snackies too late <laughs> in bed. And I woke up at 2 30 a.m. Worst heartburn I've ever had. And I'm like, I'm 97 oh. years old, dude. I can't <laughs> even it gets sleep. Way worse, dude. Yeah. Dude, You're I can't. I've got to figure as long if no snackies after like 8 30 ish, mm -hmm. I'm don't have heartburn. It's wild. Mm -hmm. So we, we're cutting it. What'd you years. say? Wait, wait 10 years, dude. It don't matter what you eat and when you eat it, you get heartburn. Period. Gosh, I can't do it. Dude. We go through a whole bottle of <laughs> know, that Pepsi like a month. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Over a bottle. Over a bottle. Yeah, we're fighting over that shit. We get down to like three. <laughs> she starts hiding it. I mean, it's bad. I do. I hide it. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> like jumping over the back of the couch for the last <laughs> drink. <laughs> like, uh -huh. She's like, I found my fucking Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why was it in your <laughs> backpack? <laughs> you know, that's yeah. incredible. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, Brian Thomas wants patron questions real quick before uh, Matt. Do you want to leave for these? You want to stay for these? I'm listen. Truly I, up to you. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch the rest of this, and huh. I don't. I'm, I was an interrupter. You you had such you a, weren't. It was, no, I do. It was. I felt it. And you were going so smoothly, and then I came in like an elk crossing a road at you know seventy five miles. That's a beautiful per hour. animal. Yeah. You, see that, you, ever see, you see that meme? I'm sorry. No, wait, wait, what? <laughs> you guys see where the elk like tried to cross the road? You recently I seen it, and he like fucking crashed out and was trying to get up in the middle. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you didn't see that? It's like if I was an elk, like. Oh wait, yes, I think Chris showed me that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm like damn, dude. <laughs> It's yeah. what Porter's referencing. Like, it's just running on ice or whatever. He like, literally, he crashed through the fence, the road, the car stopped. He couldn't even get up. <laughs> oh, trying to no. get up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I caused a delay. and You did so, not. Well, I'm, do, I'm currently doing it. If you're no, unaware, you're take we a look around. You. Okay. We love I love you. you. I love all of you guys. And oh, I you, literally can't thank you enough for everything. Um, I, I have no... I idea. I mean, like, there's. I've got a list of people who I need to like. It's a long list. I wrote it on a toilet paper roll because <laughs> it's long. Um, but I'll I will pay it back in full somehow or some way. Oh. And I love you all very much. Thank you so much for helping me and the family out, helping me with my health. And um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be nice to not have this 
messed up anymore. So I love that, dude. Thank you. I love everybody. that for you, buddy. Awesome. Um, really quick, Matt, I'm going to send you off. I'll just kick you out after this question. Bove said you should read my question. It's very relevant while Matt is on the screen. Bell Bib the Bove, also black sheep of our community, also <laughs> semi banned from all premises in which we are allowed to ban people from. Do they realize how lucky they are to have Matt blending Barrel King rather than Dan Shook? He couldn't construct that sentence correctly. I did it for him. Yeah, Matt's very good at it. Hey, I've had I have real life experience now. I'm what we would call very bad at it, and Matt is very good at it. I've had Matt's blends. I've had my blends, and I've com I don't even have to compare them. I've done it in my head. Listen, you can't love. You're not gonna love. Not gonna toot your own horn and love your own stuff, okay? Someday I will. Have other have other people have other people tell you it sucks. You know, don't don't. <laughs> that's if fair. you sit there with it yourself, you're gonna you're never gonna be happy with it. You know. Yeah, that's pretty. Fair. It's like it's like you power lifted for all those years and then just gave up on yourself. Like, what yeah. were you thinking? You I'm still pretty hard. strong. I know. <laughs> I got a hug from you before. Oh, I can't wait mm -hmm. to fucking hug you again, dude. Oh, I can't yeah. wait. <sighs> It's got good. real romantic, mm. didn't it? <laughs> got real romantic. Love you, buddy. Leave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bye, guys. Thank Again, you for thank coming you on, so buddy. Much. Love Later, you, dude. Buddy. Good night. See you. Good night, bud. All right. Okay, we're gonna ask real questions because obviously that wasn't a real one. Both. How dare you? Um. No, for real though. Uh, Darren and I have talked about this. I think that Matt. I think Matt needed to be, this was the space I really truly think that Matt belongs in. I think Matt um, will do incredibly well in this space and I hope that he continues to do it because I think he, Matt, I think everybody's got a weird, uh, this is something I, we'll probably talk about offline, Jared, because like often we talk about like blending and random shit from time, but there's like this weird, some people's brains work just very differently. Mm -hmm. I've been blending with my buddy Brandon a lot my brain works like almost in the opposite manner. i my brain was better at like, should we include this? Like, I think that would fix it. His brain was way better at being like, I think that that barrel's messing it up. You know what I mean? Like the extraction mm -hmm. versus like inclusion. Mm -hmm. I, oh yeah, it's very interesting. And what and what covers what up? I think yeah. Matt just kind of sees it like, you know, like the Matrix when you take like, yeah. like he just kind of sees it like, you know. He kind of, I think, I don't know. I don't know what he does. It's, it's different either. than what I do. Sure. And our shit's totally different. But that's probably, that's, that's why I works. think that that's super, seems like it's an important thing. It's complimentary. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Whatever, two people can't agree. It's yeah. complimentary in whiskey creation. I but, like that a lot. Okay. I think that he sees things like the Matrix. Like it becomes like, I'm not going to say, I don't use the word like, he simplifies it or something because it's not what I'm trying to say. I don't think he just right. sees it. Mm -hmm. He sees it, and I don't, it's wild. I don't see it. You know, um, he did. Have you guys had? If you haven't, eventually I'll. I, I have some, so eventually you'll have it. Matt's Bardstown blend that he did, and they put it in a, uh, oh, you yeah. know, the Bardstown gift shop bottle or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. He he cracked that whenever we when we came to an agreement. Are you serious? I was, I was at his house and he cracked that open. I'm like, are you sure? That's amazing. You want to crack this open, dude? Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah, that is the coolest thing. We did. Did you like it though? Fuck yeah, it was good. Dude. Imagine if you were like, oh, we fucked up, dude. <laughs> no, uh, no, <laughs> just imagine. No, no. <laughs> no, like no. I think it. So I think it's the. I mean, it's more my style than most of the Bardstowns that I've had. The, so it's a. Matt, when Matt went and blended it, he had texted and he's like, dude, I only got this much time to, like, it was a timed thing, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't like a blend this for the rest of your life or whatever, but he was like, I blended a burr rye. I'm a big burr rye guy. Love a burr rye. I don't know why. Just something about it. He was like, I blended a burr rye and I was like, dude, no matter fuck, I will drive to Kentucky on release day if I can't find anybody to pick one up. Because I, there's no way, I, I can't miss Matt's first ever on market, like labeled blend. And then also being sold out of a distillery gift shop, which is very cool. And then it's a burr on top of that. You know what I mean? So I, that bottle has very little left in it for me. And I love that bottle so much. It's absolutely fantastic. But like you said, the profile on that's amazing it is. for me. Too, but okay. Are you guys ready for patron questions? Fuck yeah. Ooh, let's do it. All right. These are hard hitters. So. <laughs> 
Bring it. Some they really aren't. Most of them are pretty cool. <laughs> uh, ever had a project turn out terrible? They said terrible, and had no other choice. Toss out the results. How often does that occur? We've had uh, in the very beginning. Like I was trying to learn. We had a couple things that didn't pan out, and we put them in barrels and put them in the back. And uh, but but honestly, no. I mean, I don't think so. Well, I mean, we pivot a lot. Yeah, we change. So yeah, we try to make a. We're like, this is what we're gonna do, and then we try to do it. And if we don't do it, then we might have to regroup or change. But there's we've never been in the position other than one time, and I'm talking in the very beginning. I let a barrel oxidize. Like like I said, we get the wine barrels. We pop the the bungs, let them oxidize. Maybe take the bung on, pull it off, pull, put it on over several days, let it dry out. We went we went too far on a cognac barrel, and uh, I was like, I don't want to throw it away. I was like, but sure. we can't fucking put it in a bottle. I was like, I don't know what yeah. we're gonna do with it. Stick it in the side, and it's actually corrected itself. Like one that we will never be able to use it, but we have one barrel. It ended up being two barrels. We poured it into one barrel. And we call it like the vinegar barrel because it tastes like vinegar, but I still kept it. I'm like, I'm going to do something with this. Maybe like put it back through a still or I don't know what we're mm-hmm. going to do with it. And uh, But just one time, it ended up being one barrel worth of juice still in there. And it actually tastes delicious now, but it doesn't taste like whiskey. So mm-hmm. we fuck That's with wild. it once in a while. We taste it every once in a while. But uh, we How long has it been like, in there? Two years. Oh, that's why over that's two years actually, because year. we got them in there in November. So you, two two years and a month probably. That's incredible. Yeah, I'll tell so, you a sample. It's really actually delicious. I don't know what the fuck some, it is. Someday when you're up here, uh, I got so I bought a bunch of I bought some wine finishing barrels. I thought we'd be intrigued by right. One of them was a Malbec barrel, and the reason I thought that is our High West Double Rye pick was in a Malbec barrel, and we really liked it a lot. That sounds good. Mm-hmm. Um. And it was like, dude, I'll snag them. I was buying barrels and uh, bought like a pallet, threw this one on there. And it's a Malbec barrel. It comes in on video. We, it's, It looks like the Blair Witch Project. We're out in the barrel <laughs> house. There's no electricity in our barrel house, right? Mm-hmm. So we're out there and it's nighttime. So it's literally just pitch black because there's no light. <laughs> Somebody's holding like a cell phone flashlight up. <laughs> and, and we're filming with like one of our real cameras or whatever, right? So <laughs> It's all blurry. It's weird. I smell this barrel. I popped the bung on like I bought ruby ports, tawny ports, uh, honey barrels, a uh, pear brandy, a bunch of different stuff, right? Pop all these barrels. We're like, dude, the ruby port smells like heaven. I'm a big port guy, though. I love a nice, a great port. So I'm like, that smells incredible. That smells exactly what I want a ruby port barrel smell like. We pop this Malbec barrel. It smells just like Chinese food, dude. Just like yep. General Sal's chicken. Swear to God. <laughs> Vinegar. <laughs> tangy almost a dude. It, it's i was just at dark arts with mccully and mccully does a lot of finishing over at dark arts and i said i got this malbec barrel it smells like this i go it smells like ketchup or chinese food he looks at me he goes do not put something in that barrel <laughs> he's like let do if you he goes if you put something in that barrel you're i think you're gonna find that you're gonna find some of those notes in your whiskey and he goes, and maybe not. And he goes, but I've had it happen both ways where I've basically gotten these barrels and it's ruined something. You know what I mean? Oh, what, what was it again? What was the barrel that did that? Ours was a mall bag. bag. Ours was now the weird thing is we had like five people, like Sean went out and smelled it. And he goes, we will never put something in that. Like it was in, like that though. Is it, you know it's what I mean? like, it's like vinegar or is it like, Oh dude, it, it, it smells like, like food. Like Man, I'm gonna come down there really soon. I want to smell it. Yeah, uh, it's still sitting. It does has no whiskey in it still. So, <laughs> dude, there's like a whole like Korean barbecue note you get off on a lot or get off of a and, lot of stuff. Hey, and, and maybe that's the move. I mean, though. there's a lot of sweet and sour notes that we get off our stuff. Like, sure. Uh, um, I don't know. That's interesting. I it's very in, I and the pear brandy smelled like what you would expect. The ruby port and tawny port smelled like the tawny's a little sulfury, a little smoky. The ruby's very fruity, sweet, right? Whatever. Yeah. Um, but man, that one was just very different than everything else. So Malbec would be like, wouldn't that, I'm trying to think. So Malbec would be, wouldn't that be kind of like meaty, a meaty wine? I think so. I need to ask. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It'd be like a, like a kind of like, is it, what is a Malbec? I don't know. Would that be Syrah-esque? That's what, so I'm thinking like Syrah-esque. So if it's Syrah, there's like, like, uh, what they call coat, uh, uh, oh. 
C- Coterie or, or, or Coterie. So like like down in the Syrah region, you will get a lot of meaty roast beef, olive. You'll get a lot of that stuff off of wine. Sure. So, uh, man, that's so interesting. Listen, it's still sitting there. If it's a good barrel, I know I did pitch to put one of our um, 100% weeded barrels into it because they're already funky. Not just yet. to see kind of what would happen. Yep. Mm-hmm. I have been vetoed heavily on this idea. <laughs> that's funny. I am willing to sneak it in. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so that's interesting. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't throw it away yet. I want to. I want to smell it. <laughs> oh no. Uh, well, it, like this is the bummer part, right? That's a four hundred dollar empty barrel, five hundred dollar empty barrel, so, something so, like that. So Muvedra, it- yes. So it, it's a meaty barrel. Okay. I mean, so, so something like I think a Muvedra is, I think, can be roast beef, mm-hmm. black olives, green olives. Interesting. I mean, what you're talking about? I mean, it's might be a fire ass barrel, dude. <laughs> dude. Maybe we got a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You got my. <laughs> that sounds kind of cool. Maybe we got a good one. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Here I'm gonna, and this is gonna be a hard question, and it, it doesn't have to be real. You don't have to stand by the statement ever again on any platform or anywhere you're ever at. Okay. It'll change, I'm sure. Uh-huh. Yeah. What are your two favorite, Rachel? What's your favorite release that you guys have done? And it can be for nostalgia or for any reason whatsoever. It doesn't have to be like it's the best thing you've ever done. It's like what. When you look back, you're like, I'm glad that we did that release. You know what I mean? What's that? Um, I would say the strawberry Philly, uh, and I know it's redundant from what we talked about earlier, but I think that opened my eyes to what whiskey could be. Um, and also it was just so different than a bourbon, a rye. It, mm-hmm. it, the finishing notes were were great. So good. Yeah, it was, it was delicious. <laughs> That was the first Barrel King I ever drank, by the way. Dude, it's really good. Yeah. Oh, actually. my gosh. You yeah. want to talk about getting somebody on board. <laughs> you send somebody whiskey that likes freaking straw sugar. You know what I mean? Oh we used, we used a Fit Barrel for that. Those, <sighs> those, those fit, fit Barrels. And I would love to do another one. but like, What's I don't a Fit up. Barrel? So fiber infused technology. Everybody's I don't like, even know what that is. Everybody's freaking out over the fit barrels. Oh, dude, everybody's freaking out about everything. Yeah. Dude. So I'm just like, eh, it's not worth it. But, dude, it makes oh. a good Philly, dude. It was so good, wasn't it? I tell you what, everybody freaks out about laser coats. I know. Oak extracts. Fucking <laughs> fit barrel. I didn't even heard well, about well, these. So, fit so they take a bourbon or a wine barrel and they put like strawberry brandy in it. But they make their own brandy. Okay. You know, and then we buy it from them. So. It's just I mean, a made barrel then. It's a made barrel, yeah. There's nothing they, wrong with that. People are making the this is a normal thing that just yeah. I I truly well, believe in it, you know. Well, in the next one to two years, maybe more. I don't know. We'll go up, I'll go up to four. I'm willing to go one to four now. In one to four years, I truly believe that people just go, Oh, they make because they do this for wine and nobody gives a shit, right? Yeah. They make barrels for wine. Like they do mm-hmm. something, they will spin the barrel with something in it and then dump it and put wine like this is a normal thing i think like this will catch up and people in whiskey even if it says bourbon finished in or if the ttb changes the clarification and it has to be something else but i think this will be something in whiskey in the next handful of years now that says hey we like that we made that barrel and then we put the and then we dumped it like a normal thing as if it were aged in there well honey People Barely do honey. honey's not. Yes. Yeah, exactly. We Everything. do this. People do honey online thing. live, right? Yeah. I mean, so I'm like, what the fuck does it matter as long as you're honest about it? Mm-hmm. Right. That's your video on your vanilla toast barrel king. Yeah. I texted you. I said, you're a bad motherfucker for that video. And I'll stand by that for the rest of my life. Yeah. I, and publicly, I'd stand by that. But because what happens is people take it out of context and yeah, can like attack you. So like, I'm just like, I'm not, maybe every once in a while, I'll, I'll put myself out there and get hammered. Oh, I don't feel like it. No. People like, that are I taking it out of context, yeah. bored, I find know. a hobby, <laughs> unhappy, and bored. Get a friend, <laughs> call somebody. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do something. Oh. If you're what what everybody wants is from an enthusiast standpoint. I truly believe is like a transparency standpoint. I believe is the move because I believe if you're being honest, you don't have to worry about what you've said in the past, right? Yeah. I believe if you're being honest. Even if, let's say, like the TTB disagrees later, three years down the road, they're like, no, that wasn't allowed. And you're like, I said it. We we had the, this was a discussion. Mm-hmm. And if you've changed your mind, that's okay. Now I'll follow yeah. the new rule or whatever. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's okay. Things move and change and shift down the road. This is how we like progress as humans and as a society. Mm -hmm. But if you can say in the past, no, no, no. When I released that, I said this is what I did. Mm -hmm. Who's coming back? Get a fuck. You got to get a life. You got to find somebody to hang out with. You got to go outside. You got to do something cool. Yeah. You're bored. You're bored. You're looking for, you're just looking for some, you know? Yeah. I'm going to be, I swear to we we received our honey barrels. We bought them from a, a big broker that a ton of people buy barrels from. Very wet honey barrels, all of them, right? What do you want us to do? Like, this is, it is, and we, and I left it in the video. Cookie, your butthole <laughs> does not need to be there. And I left in the video, like, look at, there's, Sean goes, there's honey, there's honey in the, like, coated the barrel. You can see the honey. I put it in the video. It's in the video. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, it tastes like honey. That was in the, we bought that. It was like that. You know what I mean? That's wildflower honey. They aged it in there. They shipped it to us, dude. It came that way. You know what I mean? Have you ever heard of uh, common enemy intimacy? No. I like the word though. You look that up. Com <laughs> like common enemy <laughs> intimacy. I'm going to Brene Brown you. Uh, oh. you, need, you need to look that up. And that, that I think it's kind of what it comes down to a lot of times. Sure. Uh, all this stuff. Something. It to sounds intimate. And to kind of like, you know, ah. Uh, conspiracies and people but, just uh, get as long as you're being cool listen if you're honest with your consumer then what yeah. then who why does anybody else care mm -hmm. right if the consumer knows what they have and what they're drinking and what whatever and with know, us, I, I think part of the problem is is we have members that will will you know yeah. sell them to members and then one might go to secondary and then that person's like well, this has a sticker on it. And like, I'm like, well, it was a test. It was a test run. Like we put the sticker and said what it is. I know that the label does, you know, like it's a sure. fin finished bourbon. So we had a bourbon label and then we put finished with stag, you know, mm. and they're like, well, you know, it's like, dude, you weren't even supposed to have that bottle. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? Like, it well, yeah. Like, you know, if you were, if you're the person, people that bought them knew. So yeah, whatever. And willingly bought it. Oh, absolutely. This is the other thing. They didn't yeah. shy away. They actually For intentionally... Sure received that yeah. so i that's just honesty and transparency like what are you gonna get in trouble later yeah. for being truthful hey man my bad i thought it, it, there's this hand up account of, i watched this golf youtube channel called bob does sports they're huge and they're incredible my favorite youtube channel right they do this thing called hand up accountability you like mess something up and somebody starts giving you a hard time like hey whoa you weren't allowed to say you like ran the bus into it, like this building. You're an idiot or something, whatever, right? That's pretty extreme. And then you go, hand up accountability. I did that. And that's my bad. And I take, um, I did it. You just, everybody's moving on, dude. I was honest with you guys. Mm -hmm. I ran yeah. the bus into the building, dude. Yeah. I said, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'll yeah. fix it and we'll move forward. Yeah. You, I just think, like, I can't, when you're being honest, when I figure out, and we've had this discussion, when we figure out, you like realize how many people, I'm learning this week. I've learned a lot about labeling with, uh, I've talked to the TTP a lot this week, talked to formulas and colas a lot this week. And I've learned a ton this week. What I've learned is like, Hey, nobody is following the rules Dude, is what well, I've learned. But, 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 but they don't even know what the rules are because it's contract. Sure. It's different contracts. We get a different rule every day. Sure. So, oh, that doesn't work. Well, the guy yesterday said it worked. And now I have to change the entire fucking line. Right. You know, I'll have to change it again next week. You know, it's just, yeah. it's really not an airtight thing. You know, everybody it's gets not. stuck on straight. It doesn't say straight. Why does it say straight? You know what straight means? It means it's two years old. Right. It means shit. Straight. Means I even, nothing. I had a misconception. I thought straight meant it had to be distilled in the state that it was being, no. uh, no. sort of like, uh, labeled, you know, whatever. And if it was like, use, that doesn't have anything to do with that. If you use, if you have a, an age statement, if you don't have an age statement, for instance, you don't put straight. Like we, we right. did it just like, okay. Cause people want to see it. Right. Sure. Um, now, now we're in a different position. We're purely membership and sure. everybody's listening. And you know, we're talking to people. We have a connection. We can say, this is what it is, but uh, all straight means, I think, unless I don't understand it is that it's two years old. I was that's actually it. informed that you're right. That, yes. that that's the right statement after the last stream where I thought, it couldn't be straight if you contract it still from a different no. state than you were within. You know what I mean? No, it, uh, no. But people, people use that. I've I've heard people come out on their platforms and be like, "Why is it straight?" And it's this, and mm -hmm. it's like, "Oh my goodness, you're tearing them down." And then other people listen, and then all of a sudden, everybody's like misinformed, and it's like, "Holy yeah. shit, man!" 
we got asked the same question. We don't have there. there it was after the 13th colony conversation last year, yeah. Sean and I had. We got asked the same question, like, "Hey, if you would have put straight, like you, you guys now have a label, and you guys have released bourbon, right? Yeah, and they're yeah. single barrels. Yeah, and they're five years old. So yep. I'm sure that those stay straight on them. And I go, <laughs> our our labels, personal ours, don't stay straight on any of them. Yeah, I don't give a, I don't care at all. Yeah. Dude, the back of it tells you the mash bill, the state it was distilled, and the age of it. it the front's got yeah. the proof on it." What else do you need, man? And if you come in and ask me about it, I'll tell you what kind of barrel it was in. I'll tell you when yeah. I bought it. I'll tell you yeah. where it was aged. You know, like, and it's one of those things back to, hey, if I'm telling you the truth, we're good, right? Like, yeah. if you tell me the truth and I tell you the truth, well, I don't think we're going to have a ton of problems. You know what I mean? It's, it's like using shame as a weapon. I don't, I don't, I don't quite understand a lot of it. Uh, sure. Like, you, if you guys are transparent as shit. Well, dude. Everything's on this. Oh, looking back to this writing nonsense, dude. Oh my <laughs> yeah. gosh. Remember that? That's your, I think I don't, that's, that's not your handwriting. That's your guys' handwriting. Is. <laughs> that's Sydney's. That's awful good. I, hey, hey, I, this, this goes on the record. Since we have left bottling at Barrel King, all of it's gotten worse. All the handwriting's way worse. <laughs> we know who can write and can in here, man. Oh, thank God, like, Sean's anybody got Anybody grab a pen. Yeah. Oh man, it was bad. Like our my handwriting is ferocious, and so like we left. You guys have you guys had four people up there. Everybody's handwriting's immaculate. We leave. We start handwriting. We're like this isn't this is not the move the whole time. This is just not it. So. But no, I, it, the, the reason the back label is that way, the, the crazy part is, and you know, because you had submitted our labels, I had resubmitted our labels when we came back for, so we could bottle. But like with, even with all that on the back of it, like the TTB still has like little problems and issues, right? Of course. And then you're like, Hey, we're going out of our way. We're actually creating work for ourselves to tell every, to tell our consumer What's what we think there? they care about. Right. Yep. Yep. We, we, on the back of those labels, which was approved, it said, which was approved by the TTB, yeah. it says state of distillation on the right. back of those labels. I resubmitted those labels under our bottling permit number. The TTB came back and declined them and said that the words, it, I swear to God, dude, I have this on a video and I've never put it on the internet, but it, it it's on my computer. The, the actual uh, office action or whatever you would call it, says distilled in label requires state of distillation statement. And I swear to God, I replied and said, it says the words state <coughs> of distillation on the label. But it has to be distilled in. And then they respond and said, that's not a, that's not the requirement. The requirement is a state of distillation as in distilled in or distilled in. blank, uh, Kentucky straight bourbon, Maryland bourbon. And I'm like, it says state of dist. You use the words that I use, and you're saying I can't use those words, which is even crazier. You know what I mean? And oh. then everybody's all like, produced, produced, produced. We use produced. We said distilled in Indiana and produced by old yeah. road craft spirits. Because I feel like it's a production, man. I don't feel like we're just bottling shit. It is. You know, well, like we and produce air. Produce is an umbrella word. We which is crazy that they've been okay with the word produce for the past 50 years. They aren't. Mm -hmm. So did they change that? Cause they actually made us yeah. change it. Oh, they shit. changed it. Interesting. That's it why changed they made the, change the it. distilled in thing. Like as of kind of uh -huh. late, but, um, but it's uh -huh. like, you, you know how many distilleries in Michigan put and produce by right now? Mm -hmm. and, and it's Indiana or it's, uh, or it's green river or it's whoever. I don't care who it is. Right. Well, well we put Indiana, well, we do put Indiana on it. So we say, we say produced by old road craft spirits. Mm-hmm. And then we put distilled in Indiana. Right. So yeah, I know, but, but like, not anymore. Back to you guys. You guys are also very open and very transparent with what you're doing. When you are serving members or a club, you have like this line of communication, right? Yeah. Hey, this is what it is. This is what we did. This is why we, you get, there's, there's a, an above and beyond. It's, it's as if somebody came into our shop and was like, what's that barrel over there? And we go, that's a 30 year old Tawny Port barrel from France. Like that's not information we could put on the label. Right. Yeah. But it's cool. It's fun. You yeah, know, and if you can get that to the fun. people who are drinking it or buying mm -hmm. it or whatever, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But it's just special, man. It's, mm -hmm. we're, it, it, we're all lucky that we can have a connection with, with our, with our people, yes. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. I, I can't imagine a world 
where we're selling. I just went, I don't think we do it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Sell to a distributor who sells to, uh, I guess, you know, a retail and then the retail hires somebody and then somebody comes in and buys it. And I mean, j just a proof and concept. We had a whole bunch of stuff in, in Kansas city. And uh, so we had like nine bottles of something, the fruitier, the, they call it fruitier, the better. It was just a rye, the straight rye, but it was really good. And it, it's been there for like a year. And it sat there in the shelf for a year. And then somebody came on in our group and said, I just found these and then literally sold it out in 30 minutes. It was an existing member who yeah, found it. Yeah, and it's gone in 30 minutes. And other really? members were like, so, help me get that. Is that not just really? a perfect, op like, uh, you know, that's the difference mm -hmm. between, you know, trying to chase somebody down who bought something. I mean, basically, basically dumping millions of dollars in, into into a marketing machine that mm -hmm. might or might not hit your person, you know, mm -hmm. and then the difference in just like letting people kind of find us and mm -hmm. building something for them as we go and growing as we grow with sure. them. And, uh, you know, it's a journey. We're just, mm -hmm. we're so lucky. You're mm -hmm. lucky. We're lucky. Everybody here is so lucky mm -hmm. to be yeah. part of this. It's, it's so awesome. There's an intimacy to it, which there is beautiful, is. right? Yeah. There's like a, this, there's a, an attachment or a relationship. We've had this conversation a lot on the phone. Yeah. I do truly believe that like in some years in the re very near future, um, these purchases your consumer it comes down to like a brand loyalty standpoint because i either know them or i I like the product enough to just stick with them mm -hmm. oh and i think that's harder when they don't know the backstory or you guys yeah. or they don't know us or they don't know somebody they like right yeah um it, it is real hard to know like hey was jack daniels a piece of shit <laughs> yeah i mean maybe he was and like, like allegedly though, like I'm not getting in, like maybe I don't know that I'm just saying allegedly, <laughs> yeah. and maybe he was a great dude. That's he, he had to have little man syndrome. He's like five two, you know what <laughs> I mean? Without a doubt, allegedly he had little man syndrome. So but funny. it's way easier to connect with you two. It's way easier to like stop in a Barrel King, yeah. hang out with your guys's family there, mm -hmm. and like get it. It makes sense when you walk in there. It, that makes sense when you walk in. Sydney's there, or your guys are there. Or Joey's there, Roxanne's there. Lord knows. Imagine if Matt's there at some point. Dude, if people walk in, it's it's just <laughs> that makes sense now. All of a sudden, and not only does it make sense, like I'm attached. Like I want to be here. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's the exact reason that Chris Ron loves you guys. It, it is. It truly is. It speaks to the same message. Mm -hmm. I and hopefully, I feel like we've I've, I've we've tried really hard to work do that with our patrons, right? Is to be open and transparent and try to like explain everything. And this is why, and yep. this is how, and this is a fucking nightmare, you yeah. know, and this is expensive or this is whatever. And we try to do the same thing for the same reason, because down the road, like I want you to come back because you enjoyed your time here. You felt respected, loved. You felt mm, like you were yep. part of it. You felt like this journey was our journey. It wasn't mine. Absolutely. It was everybody. Right. Yeah. yeah. We met some of the most they're, amazing they're our people. best friends. They are. It's weird. Yeah. It's it's weird. Yeah. Man. Like they're still here. They they, they <laughs> like us. Yeah. It's weird. It's it's oh, it, our best friends mm -hmm. we met through this stuff. Yeah. It's pretty. Neat. Which is awesome. Yeah. It's so cool. How cool! Yeah. Like it's when you look thing. back, the ride or dies. Like the family. Mm -hmm. Like the like I'll show up. Like you need yeah. me. I'm there. Type yeah. thing. People. Oh yeah. Like it. Like we've met a lot of those people through this platform. I I've met far more people through this platform that are like that for me than I have through any job in IT yes. I ever worked yes. me too, man. through any, I truly, and I don't no, no disrespect to the people who like mm -hmm. go to church regularly, but then church that I went to. Right. Um, I met, I have more people that I could rely on no matter what for the rest of my life yep. through this. Mm -hmm. It's wild. It's very weird. Yeah. I mean, wait, wait, you and I, the way we say it, but we're so lucky. We're just yeah. lucky. This is—I don't know if "lucky" is a great word, but shit. we're very fortunate. We're yeah. so fortunate, man. Yeah. It's yeah. just like never could have dreamed mm -mm. that it no. life would be like this, mm -hmm. dude. If people tell you that you're like, "Hey, listen, these fucking bourbon weirdos," <laughs> <laughs> they'll help you with anything you need. You're like, "What are you talking about?" Dude? That's funny, dude. It's yeah. weird. It's it like is. you're like the thing because what you find is. All the bourbon did was like, hey, that was the first thing in common, and now we're cool. Mm -hmm. That's what all it was, right? Yep. It was just like the, I can sit with Ryan Elvez and talk about life, you know? Yeah. And, and we're good. Like I'm, I stayed at his house last time I went to Kentucky. 
talked about golf. We talked, mm-hmm. but it, it's just because Ryan's Ryan's my guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. No matter what. And and it was like we met through this. If this somehow ever went away, we're still he's still my guy no matter what. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And it's interesting. All you need like that, you need like this connection. I think the cool part about bourbon or whiskey is this is big enough that it's like a it's countrywide or nate, whatever. It's mm-hmm. big enough. It's not local necessarily. Mm-hmm. So it grants you like these relationships you wouldn't have just staying in town or yep. whatever, you know, yep. but. Yep. Okay. Can I tell you my favorite batch? Yes, please yeah. do. Uh, it's going to be like a plug, but it's, but it's true. But it's, it's the other part of that 70, 77 oh, MP. Okay. We haven't talked about this. I'm so excited. All right. <laughs> no, that's, so so it's, it's 77. It's next month. So it's the other part of the MP. So, so this is a Feb or March release. So it's gonna be it's gonna be February. February. We're letting it go because it's ready. Okay. It is ready, and uh, it's just basically the the we we pulled we started bottling that that batch, and uh, and we knew we were gonna pull two hundred off uh, to do that for Matt, and uh, but he got like seventy, and Rachel's like, we got to send everybody home. It's getting frozen. And I'm like, son of a bitch, because it's gonna change, you know. Sure. Said, well, he either needs to get two hundred and twenty. Or he needs to pour him back in the tank. He just couldn't pour him back, so he pulled two twenty, and then we had to wait about two days, and we rebottled. Uh, so the rest of it, so that's seventy seven. So it's it's close to the the, the oh, one that I love it. MP and seventy seven are, and MP seven seven and seventy seven are different. Mm-hmm. But I do believe I do feel like I'm most proud of this, of that blend and this blend that I've. I mean, I know I am. So I love that. Super. That's my favorite, man. I got to, there's two reasons I love it. Number one, um, because when you told me that, I was like, I already got a freaking, I already got a bottle lined up like February. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and then number two, because I, I, when you said that, you were like, they're a little different, which is interesting. I think they that's are. really interesting. They and are. when you said they're a little different, I was like, that's cool. Cause I'll have this and I'll have that like next month. I'll grab that one from the membership. And I got this one. Now here's the funny part. This is 77 MP. This is what Jared's talking about. So the MP just stands for obviously for Matt Porter. So it's batch 77. It's the same batch technically as Jared's referencing. This was the one that um, patrons bought out today was the MP. Um, but I want you to know that you've created a laser code issue here. That's exactly okay. right. The like laser codes, <laughs> it proves it's real. It's a real thing. Yeah, yeah. Did you get the MP badge? Oh, I the laser code. Hey, the laser code thing. There's something to it, but there's not a lot to it. No, does that not, make sense? Yeah, it totally does. Like, don't don't be upset if you didn't get the good laser code because they're 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 so close. You know, but, the bad laser code, the bad one. It's honestly pretty good. We did it in a triangle blind, and I was like, I don't know. And I knew that two were one, and one was the other. So like, I don't know which is which. I just know that this one's my favorite, but I don't know which of the two are the same two does that make sense Mm -hmm. so the problem is like i do have a favorite i also can't tell which is which which is like fuck which means they're not that far apart there's maybe a little difference maybe here and there Mm -hmm. but i also don't know if it's because i'm drinking them in a certain order am i drinking too close together they're all high proof you know what i mean yeah Mm -hmm. i do and which one you drink first is really the most important probably of that fact and Which seemingly Sean had that situation where he had two laser code A twenty twos, one laser code A twenty three, and A twenty three is supposed to be the good one, right? Mm-hmm. And laser code A twenty three was the first glass, and then two and three were twenty two. And he goes, "The middle glass for me is better if I drink the first glass first, and worse if I drink the third glass first. Yep. But there you go. So. Like it almost creates like a are the batches that much different or was it like the comparison made them different? Yeah. Right. Side by siding is is imperfect. So it is. It's yeah. unfortunately. Which is why we had to switch the that's why we switched the scale like for the whiskey of the year this year. That's why I was like, this whiskey, right, nothing else. Right now, that one. Mm-hmm. Just give it a score. What mm-hmm. is it? What's wrong yep. with it? What's good about it? How great is it? You know, the mouthfeel, the whole experience of one bottle right now. Yeah. Not like that versus these other three. Just that one whiskey. Because the comparison thing does, it kind of like muddy stuff a little bit. Yeah, but, you almost have to go, uh, Matt likes to go this way and then this way too. Mm-hmm. I know, and you have to. I'm just so gosh dang lazy. You I, have, I, dude, you have to. I know. <laughs> yeah. 
Gosh, dude, Matt Porter's in here talking about one time where Jack Daniels, Elvez gives him, he's trying to do it blind. Elvez gives him the glass. Then he gives him the second glass. Matt goes, that was too fast, dude. You gave it to me too fast. Don't ever give Porter two glasses of whiskey too close to each other. He'll lose his fucking mind. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I, I'm excited to see the difference between MP77. Yeah. And then normal, we'll call it normal 77. Yep. Like you said, normal comes out in February. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, All right. Talk. Adam Hunt says, oh, sorry. The first person that asked that first question was Rich M. I'm sorry. I forgot to say your name, buddy. Adam Hunt. Talk about the Knighted series. How did you name it? What's the process to create bottles slash barrels in that line? She named it. You That's name a it? good name, too. Yeah, she came up with that, and then we ran it through everybody, and mm -hmm. the, the the members had to say in it, and but it just seemed, yeah, it seemed natural. It and fits then, perfect. And what, what was the other part of that? I'm sorry. Um, what's the process to create bottles and barrels in that line? Like, what is uh, I guess like to simplify the question, the word knighted. Yeah. What does it, it mean? So it, it means it's going to be a a bourbon or a rye, finished in a X rare bourbon barrel. Okay. Yep. And you generally put knighted on big bottles, something I would call like monster whiskeys. Yeah, usually, like the knighteds I've had have been like that's a big. There's a lot of flavor, concentrations high, flavor profile is like. We have like I just like that whiskey. Like my flavor profile that I prefer is fat guy whiskey. There's a lot of confectionery sugar on your guys's whiskey, and I is. love that a lot. So like a lot of it. Like a lot. Oh, like, oh, yeah. so you guys have your own note, which I think. Back yeah. to the podcast you mentioned earlier. That's why they're wrong is you guys have your own. You can give me a, a 12 year blom from the good days. We'll call them the yeah. good days. Give me a 12 year blom. Give me a 12 year boon. Give me a 12 year Valentine pangree from Michigan. Give me a 12 year OKI. I'm going to just be like, those are all real good MGP. Like they're all incredible. Right. But the differentiation between the four of them, literally based on the bear, the wood. Yeah. Not where it cannot the name, not the label, Single right? Yeah, there wasn't a profile difference between the four. If you, yeah. if they were single barrels, I'll say if they were yeah. single barrels, yeah, yeah, yeah. With with you, there's a profile difference. There's a profile difference for, between you and Penelope and Nulu and Nashville and Carter's, and like there's a profile difference here. There's such a profile difference. My buddy Garrett was the first one that pointed out to me. He's like, he's had, I think he had had three barrel kings and we would hang, we hang out and have drinks. Right. So if I get a new barrel gang, I'll bring it over. And he had bought the bourbon junkies pick and, or the blend. And he was like, dude, that has the same note as yours. And I'm like, what are you, they're completely different whiskeys. You know what I mean? And he's like, no, no, no there's an, no, I'm not saying that whiskey's the same I'm saying There's the same note on both. So then one time, every time I go over there, he comes over, like he'll bring a blind or I'll do a blind at his house. We'll just like kind of fuck around. And he gives me one and I smelled it. And I was like, that's Barrel King. And he goes, it is. And I go, it has that fucking, no <laughs> there's, there's a standout yeah. difference in like whatever that is. It's for me, it's a confectionery sugar, almost vanilla frosting esque that I don't, that's what I equate it to yep. Yep, that yep. I don't get on anybody else's MGP whiskey. I didn't realize we had a note until you <clears throat> until you were here and you go, now that's a Barrel King profile. And I thought, really? Like, I didn't even know until you were here. That's the first sure. time I ever even considered that we had a profile. It's real. But we do. Oh, yeah, I see it now. Shit, man. <laughs> it's like all not, I can taste anymore, man. <laughs> dude, not like, only do, but I think that is so, that I think that is so special to have your own note. In the yeah. scheme of whiskey and have your own when like a bunch of us are out here sourcing, right? And a bunch of us are out here sourcing real similar whiskeys from the same people. And then to have your own thing in that in there is special. Like that's very cool. And I think it's also something to like set a state, like put a flag in. You know what I mean? That's a fuck hey, vanilla frosting's fucking barrel king, bitch. You know what I mean? Get the fuck <laughs> out of here. You know, you know, rock candy's ours. You got to get, you know, it's it. so interesting. I, don't even know. I think it's in, I think it's, I think that's a beautiful thing. And I think it means something. I think that means you're doing a damn good job over there. So, um, are there any particular barrel types you have not finished in that you would like to try or already have in the works? 
And that was from Chris Norman. So, uh, yeah. I I mean, yeah, I don't want to say it. <laughs> okay, that's fair. It's a secret. Yeah, a we, secret. I, I have my sights on something that hasn't been done. And, oh. uh, and uh, I just, and I think it's going to be really complimentary. I like that. It's going to be buzzy. It's going to be kind of like, like it's going to sound gimmicky, but it's not. And uh, yeah, I, I have like a, I have a couple advisors, you know, I like run things, people buy things, sure. buy. and one of them is even like, I don't want to get, you know, you shouldn't go gimmicky. I'm like, dude, but it's going to be delicious. I was like, and you shouldn't. I said, people said stag was gimmicky too, you know. <laughs> True. So don't not do something great because you're afraid of judgment. You know? I called somebody an idiot one time. You know what I mean? <laughs> dude, it makes great whiskey. How crazy! I call somebody an idiot, and now I'm like, so I'm so beyond sold. It's insane. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is one base bourbon from a legacy distiller that you'd want to work with and put your own spin on from Eric Harnett? Dude, Old Forester. Oh, I love that. That'd be, I mean, there's nothing that even touches that. Yeah, yeah. I love that. You're uh, you like the Old Forester single barrel barrel proofs, don't you? Oh fuck, man. Have you had, you prefer the barrel proofs or the hundred proofs? Oh, barrel barrel proof all yeah. day. Some of the barrel proofs I think are better than uh, than their like big shit. I think some of the barrel like the barrel proofs will beat a lot of the birthday bourbons. They'll beat the the presidential stuff. Those one fourteens. I mean, I've mm-hmm. some of those barrel some of those single barrel barrel proofs are their fucking the best thing they make besides their forced. Uh, you know, the uh, King Kentucky, of course. That's sure. Pretty- yeah. Well, dude. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Yeah, if we even get to a level in which we're talking King Kentucky, dude, or a hey, Earth and then like Mars, right? Like Elon's yeah. trying to get there. King yeah. Kentucky might as well be Mars, dude. <laughs> King, but, those 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 whiskeys truly. If you can get to the point in which they compete at that, I that's I I think that I truly would put King Kentucky above most B tax. So. I think if you went got to the point where you were like Coy Hill King Kentucky range, you're almost mm. Mictor's 20 range, right? Like you're yeah. borderline like breaking the ceiling of like this is some of the best current day whiskey made period. I'd almost rather have I'd almost rather have Coy the the really high proof Coy Hills or King mm-hmm. Kentucky over Mictor 20 except for the old 20s. I like the old okay. stuff a lot. Sure. The new member Mictor 20s don't really touch those old those old ones for me. So sure. I'm like I have this like thing in my head and I I'm always disappointed, even though I love Mictor. I love Mictor's products, and I'm not shitting on it because I think it's amazing. But sure, man, those old ones, some of those are just a, like mind blowing, and uh, you know, it's how it goes, though. Yeah, it's yeah. A, so it's like well, it's like it's like the midwinters, where like dude, batch really five was like thirty thousand bottles or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not even probably, and then batch. 11 was 180,000 bottles. So like there has to be a scale to some extent here because there's demand. So they're trying to hit a scale. So because there's like, there's a bunch of people, there's so much money we left on the table, not having another 100,000 bottles, right? So then their marketing and sales are like, we have to have this. Their board's like, yep, because that would bump our quarter by a significant margin. And then... At, they get to it, and now, mind you, 11 was really good. Um, Midwinter Night's Ram 11 was really good. 10, though, was the biggest release until 11. 10 yeah. was not good. Not good at all. Not comparatively. Had a lot of sulfur on it, I thought. Tons of sulfur. Yeah. And now, great. mind you, 10 was the first time they ever blended. I, my understanding is 10's the first time they ever put Tawny in it. That's Yeah. Now, now here, let me tell you what I got going on, and maybe I'll mess this whole thing up. It's possible. <laughs> What do you do? I got 175 gallon tawny port barrel aging rye right now. Oh, I've got two ruby hogsheads aging rye right now. I am then now, now I agree because there's a lot of sulfur in taunt, there is sulfur and smoke in tawny. The goal here is to offset the sulfur from the tawny with a toasted profile from a finishing project on these blended Ruby and Tony port. You might not have any problem at all. You might think you just have to see how it comes out. You might not have to do any offset. I know, but toasted rye. No, it might be amazing. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Toasted rye. So good. (laughs) If you take the fruity notes from the Ruby and you take the smoky note from the Tony and then you toast that 
we might be on to something. Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to kill it. Yeah. Yeah. It might also be a kajillion dollars out of our pocket. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, you'll be all right. Dude, this Tony Bortbrill was like a grand empty. You know what I mean? Like, and it fit five, four or five full barrels of whiskey in it. Like, it's just crazy. Did you fill it all the way up? No, I could. I committed three fulls in like a short rye to it because I'm like, what if this, if this goes sideways, we got 20 grand in rye in this barrel. That wouldn't be great yeah. for us. We're not. Yeah. We're not at the scale in which losing four barrels of rye is a good decision. So oh, yeah. Yeah. now here's the thing. The Tawny currently by itself is awesome. Like right now by itself, I'm actually really happy with the Tawny. One of the rubies is awful right now. And then one of the rubies is really good right now. So we'll see where it goes. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Rachel likes finished rye, but the strawberry finish specifically. Mm -hmm. You like oh, wine. Really Yes, all of the all of the Philly line. I okay. Like. Mm -hmm. The blueberry, the blackberry, the ap uh, apple. I'm trying to think. The apple Philly, yeah. blueberry, blackberry, strawberry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite wine? Oh, I like uh, just from like a, not a bottle, like a category. Mm, probably cabs. Napa cab. Napa cabs. Mm -hmm. Napa cabs for. Yeah. Yeah. What do you when you go Napa cab? Mm -hmm. What's the pairing? Food. So I'm kind of like passenger princess in this game. <laughs> <laughs> to be completely honest, he takes care. He 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 is a great cook. Yeah, he is a great mm. wine pair with food. I literally just show up. So sure. um, she doesn't that. like to drink and eat it. She doesn't like her her wine with food. Just to be frank, yeah, yeah, she yeah. Oh, likes interesting. To, okay. in between or after mm -hmm. or in before, she, but she doesn't really, you know, bite and then drink, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, mm -hmm. but she likes uh, Napa cabs, even whenever there's nothing to eat with it. She just, she just wants, a, she wants a tannic fucking <laughs> yeah. tart. Yep, oh, I'm bomb. with you, yeah, I'm with you on that 100%. Yep. <laughs> I, the, I don't, I can't do it with whiskey, like, I don't, I'm not into food with whiskey, like. I don't need, if I'm going to have steak, I'm in, I love a, like a heavy cab, mm -hmm. like a really, really heavy cab, like a big ass. Mm -hmm. Me like, too. Yeah. Oh, with steak, with something fatty or something. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I'm all, like, all over it. Whiskey with that. I'm just like, dude, I just, I can drink whiskey after or before yeah. whatever. If I'm going to do, but like with the, I don't, there's something about wine. Pour as a dessert. Love port as a dessert. Love that. I don't know. I fell in love with We used to go on all these wine trips to Traverse City because there's so many vineyards in Traverse City. Mm -hmm. So we always go on all these wine trips. And I fell in love with port on those wine trips. And I hated, I don't really like like olive forward or earthy mm -hmm. wines so much. Yeah. But I fell in love with like these heavy dark fruit, like plummy cabs while we were there. And so now when we go to a nice restaurant and have like a steak and Ricky will order like a wine, I'm like, that's, that's, hold on, <laughs> reel that in. <laughs> we're getting like a big cab. You know what I mean? Because she doesn't love yeah. cabs by themselves, but she likes them with, sure. with certain foods or whatever. Mm -hmm. So the pairing aspect of wine, I think, is incredible. But yeah. no, no food with wine. And you just enjoy the wine itself. You know what I mean? She does. Yeah. 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 Matt Porter himself. I told Jared of a project I wanted to do with some barrels last year to resurrect a flavor profile. He hasn't told me no yet. You can tell him oh, no one here if you'd he like. You can totally do it. And uh, it's actually going to probably answer. He, he wants to use uh, some different uh, legacy bear, uh, the spirits to combine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He did. He did. He, he texted me. He goes, hey, can we get some of those five-year-old Sagamore bourbon barrels? That's We're funny. looking for <laughs> Well, you, you have some of the ones he wants. One of them is Martin. So. Oh, is it? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I yeah. tell you what, uh, yeah, don't buy go. the ten-year ones, dude. Uh, the fifth, hey, I will say the out of the legacy barrels that we bought, the fifteen-year Martin barrel, smelling that barrel empty was the greatest nose. If that nose is yeah. on any whiskey, I would literally never buy another whiskey in my life. Well, it's French toast syrup, butter, browned melted butter on the French toast. King's factory, just mm. sugar on her. King's breakfast food. sausage in the maple though you know what i mean like oh, yeah. change your fucking life on the nose of this barrel dumped it in 
we just got to start. The problem is we got all these shitty barrels. I mean, you know, I mean, you even said to us while we were there, hey, it doesn't usually go like this. Yeah. You don't usually, <laughs> you don't usually pull seven to eight and have like four to seven good yeah. ones. Mm-hmm. You know, it's weird. I mean, you're just, you're not weird. Everything, all the barrels are in a dumb phase right now. It's, but you can find things to work with. And if you have a conditioning area, there's something mm-hmm. you can worm room to work. But it right now is a real depressing time in mm-hmm. all the rick houses uh, across the United States. I'm sure, except for Texas and whatever, they're That's probably fair. they're probably in their heyday right now, harvesting everything. Would be my guess. No, they're not. You want to know why they're not? Because Texas whiskey ain't it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, that Iron Root shit's pretty good. Iron Root, oh, Iron Root's pretty good. Yeah. Iron yeah. Root does a good job. Still Austin does a really good job. Yeah. Um, the um, Some of the Garrison stuff is not bad. It, it, you, you do have to know what you're getting into, but it's not bad. You know what yeah. I mean? You're like, the Cowboy this year was good. Day. It's not bad. Bel- hey, but now I will say this. Now, this is a me specific thing. I'm a big Bel Marea fan from Garrison. Wow. But I love heavy toast bourbons. So, yeah. and it is only that, it is nothing else. You know what I mean? It is very yeah. oak and char forward and almost nothing else. So, um, okay. We're going to do one more question. I told you guys one to two hours. It's been two yeah. and a half. I'm so sorry. We're good. We're good. This, is, yeah. this is enjoyable. This is yeah. I'm so sorry. All I do, want, we're good. I talk. And then I give you guys like a moment and then I'm a, I'm, I'm a disaster. Right. <laughs> and then we go back and I ask a question. I let you guys answer. And I talk too much again, like right now. And then we get back into Not it. Not too much. No, it's, Dude, great. it's great. Yeah. Okay. Right, man. This says, okay. And this is, you know what, Chris, and this isn't even Chris Ron. This is different. Chris, Chris, Chris Ron probably knows what I'm going through. Me and Brandon Sprague have been beating our head against seven walls for three weeks. Right. Uh, I'm blending. So, um, I don't think that we have the correct barrels to blend the profile that I currently am interested in having. Yeah. I think you I I actually haven't, down. I haven't yeah. told you, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm going to come down. Go ahead. So I haven't told you this story and I'm going to make it quick. Cause I want, I'm interested in the question. Um, I talked earlier about Brandon being really good at excluding a barrel because of a flavor profile. Yeah. And then yeah. I think that I was, did a good, like, my brain works in a way and was like, dude, this is what it needed. Brandon and I had finally come to terms. I wanted a fruit forward blend is, was what I wanted. We don't have enough fruity barrels right now, mm. which is why it becomes so difficult, right? So we have a lot of five-year Barton, which is very musty and very damp woody is what it, the like. Weird. Dude, I just bought a bunch of Spirit of Canton barrels. I think we're just going to rebarrel a shit ton. Like brand news. You know, char 2, toasted head, brand new barrels. And I think we're going to start dumping this Barton into it. Like the Barton f- almost literally f- tastes like the woods wow. wet, mm. which is fucking weird, dude. That's gross. It's not good, man. It's fucking yeah. bad. So much money on these, unfortunately, right? So well, anyways. I almost consider putting them in another Barton, like a 15-year Barton barrel or some shit too. Like. So funny you say that. I think yeah. one of them went into one of our ten-year Barton barrels. There you go. Yep. Yeah, that, that sounds like yep. a really good yep. strategy. Honestly. I believe that. I believe the one day I was gone, Brandon and Sean were over there transferring a bunch of stuff. We got a bunch of gross MGP that was aged in a vineyard cellar for wait five years. He's never seen bad. heat. Contract distilled, <laughs> shipped under one year. We bought it five, and it had been in that vineyard cellar for five. So. It just tastes like it's three. You know what I mean? It just tastes really young. I, you taste it. Oh, uh, I had it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. That's six and a half almost. So, yeah, you know. That's, that's what your guys brought in here? Is that what you're talking about? I believe so. Yeah, they, they told me it. they were going to see yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, I had that. Yeah. Did they bring you one that said M3? It, I don't think it tastes three years. I, I think. Oh, you know, dude. Yeah, maybe four. It doesn't taste six and a half. You know what I mean? It tastes like a really good base to me. <sighs> Dude, I mean, so honestly, more. you could do anything with that one. I mean, I think so. So, I bought direct from MGP. Those barrels that came in, I bought eight. Those barrels that came in, almost all eight were pretty damn good, honestly. So, pretty fruity, pretty six and a half year oldie. There's some oak in them. There's a little char, whatever. Anyways, we go through this whole thing. We find this barrel, kind of on an offshoot of a. I told Brandon, I go worst case scenario, we're blending that. 20% rye sagamore over there because these have red apple. These have a red fruit profile. 
-hmm. Maybe this saves our blend, right? So we go through all the Barton barrels as a last ditch effort. None of them. We go through all this other stuff. We find two MGP barrels. One, this S, we just call it S12. S12 goes into this barrel. That blend initially off the rip, awesome. Like off the rip, cherry, apple, a little bit of brown sugar, tiny bit. Not super old, but not youthy, not corn, right? And sort of like it's very bright, vibrant. Well, then we pull it back, you know, let it sit for like it's sat for probably, it's probably sat for two weeks now and like it's eight ounce bottle. Well, anyways, it's just not, it's a little sharp. Like it just needs to round out. We need something to round it out, right? As we're sitting there, I'm like, dude, we just need something to round it out, whatever. There's an astringency from like this one MGP bro that we got that tastes like it's toasted. It's very char forward right now. And so Brandon's like, I think that char barrel is creating that astringency that neither of us really like. Brandon gives me this pour when I walk in the other day. It's an MGP bourbon barrel, six and a half years old. I don't know what it is. He just hands it to me. I drink it. He goes, what do you think about that? I'm like, I look at him. I go, Brandon, that can't be our whiskey. And he goes, it is. And I go, Brandon, that, that fixes the blend. If that just, that goes in the blend and we're done. Like we're done. We have a barrel proof bourbon blend. If that goes in the blend and that's our we whiskey. Got it. He fucking goes and blends it up, right? As an asshole. Gives it to me. Nailed it. Literally, it added red. It added a maraschino oh, cherry man. note. It added, it rounded out like the sharpness in the back of the blend. It fucking did it, right? He looks at me and goes, dude, bad news. We, we already dumped that barrel. I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Oh, that no. barrel went into Sean's Ooh. honey toasted blend, which we're launching at the grand opening. That was the barrel that went in there, but we had like three bottles left because of the weight ratio. Right. Mm -hmm. So needless to say, we don't even have this MGP barrel anymore. Actually, <laughs> that actually rounded out what I believe to be rounding out our blend and whatnot. Jeez Louise. Oh, so sorry. the question real long story, sorry for, <laughs> from Chris Reister is number one. How are you guys? So awesome. That's the first question. There's two of them. Jared pointed at Rachel for those listening. <laughs> Can confirm. They're both incredible people. Number two, how long does a blend take to come together completely? So how long would you blend? And then when would you say like, hey, it's definitely done changing? You know what I mean? Well, you should have a good idea what you got within a week. I mean, on, I mean, and the more you do it, the sooner you'll know I'm getting to where, I mean, like I can kind of tell a, a rough idea the day of, and then the things that, uh, really, uh, fudge, it's so, so complicated sometimes, but it's not like, so I'm going to say a week you can, you should know what you got in a week, it, but it's still going to change it. But I've, I've put things in bottles and then had to pour them out uh, 45 days later. Cause it just didn't work out. Uh, but, but it might just be one piece. A lot of times the finish will kind of leave like, uh, uh, but you know that, like, you know, that going in, like uh, there's some things that, that really stick out, like finish might cover up fruit, but the finish is going to like kind of give way. And then uh, if you start with like a really, I like to start like bland for the center and then kind of add on to that, but things find something that'll hold, but not dampen out things the the kind of the uh the pop notes you know so uh you know personal couple days i kind of i got after about a week you really should know what you have and uh and whatever changed in that week you can expect that change to kind of go on but it's going to slow down considerably so if you lost some finish add some finish uh, a lot of times the finish will, will go back will go backwards in like a day or two so whatever it's done over that week, I think you can kind of you can kind of count on that happening some more. Uh, so uh, I'm just gonna throw out a week, you know. But I love that. But but but, but like 77 and MP 77. I uh, I mean that's like months, you know. And like Gamma was like months. So you know it's just. Uh, but that's like really fine tuning something and having to wait a way to. And really, you know, that's just really getting down and dirty with it. And those are big, those are 
intentionally big, big blends. You know, I'm like Huge. yeah, eight hundred bottles. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That, that's why it's kind of different, right? Yeah. So if we're just doing one barrel, just doing like one a one barrel blend. It really is all about capturing the right day because sure. you have that one barrel blend. It's going to change so much day to day, depending on humidity and heat. And really, when I say heat, it has nothing to do with contracting the barrel. It really has to do with solubility, in my opinion, or you know, what goes into the barrel and what comes back out is a big deal. But solubility is a huge deal. Like how much of how much of that char actually goes into the liquid. Like how much the liquid will accept. So, you know, yeah. Does that answer it? It answers it 100. percent I think yeah. actually, I think. Uh... I think it answers it and it's interesting. Everybody's philosophy on blending seems to be a little different, right? There's like, you have yours. You guys are philosophers is what I'm trying to say. I got a, I have like some piece of paper that says I was good at philosophy in college for a while. You're a philosopher. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm, I'm random. I think really I'm, I'm kind of random. You know, what's funny is that you say that. And what I think is funny is when I describe the way I was talking to Alec Rubin today, and he said, hey, well, I'm up there because he's coming up. And he said, well, I'm up there. I want you to teach me how to blend whiskey. And I said, I don't know how to blend whiskey yet. So that'd be a huge mistake on your part. That's funny. And he goes, oh, you got it, but you've been doing it. And I go, doesn't mean I know how. Like, I've been driving cars for a long time, dude. I'm not an F1 driver. You know, like this isn't, there are different things. And so, but I think, uh, I think what's interesting is how I described you. I said, Jared's very improvisational i don't know if that's a real word i might have made it up but it's the right word though jared has a very good idea as to what he has available and very good at like hey we should hold on come with me to the back we're gonna get this (laughs) full barrel (laughs) and that might do the thing (laughs) (laughs) every time i did it i had a great time so i just it was one of those things like honestly truly is like i was like that's why i found I'm, your blending methodology so intriguing one time i got to blend with dixon on stage for like i don't know 30 minutes or something that was cool that was really cool truly like something i'll never forget right and the whole time we're up there i just asked him questions and i looked at him and i asked him questions and i watched him and i you know what am i going to get to do that again probably never ever right when i got to blend with you it was like this is it's so cool and interesting to see the you blend different than Dixon who blends different than our buddy, Justin, who was working at Valentine in Michigan, who I consider a very good blender, um, who blend you guys, you blend different than Nancy, whoever, right. Any name that you want to throw out there that people would recognize as somebody who does a good job blending. Um, I think like there's this list and I find the philosophy between all of the different people. Very interesting because I think, I don't think that anybody's just like, that's the way, no matter what, like, Everybody else is wrong. Yeah, I think like that works really well for you. When we were there, you fixed something that I thought was unfixable that I said after we had put it together. I'm like, I don't like that at all. Like I, and it was one of our barrels that we were using at the time. So there's this note from our barrel. And I know it has to be from our barrel because it's a black licorice note and our barrel was awry. Mm-hmm. I hate that. Mm-hmm. And it came through heavy and you're like, well, let's try this. Add one thing. The black licorice, you know, it's gone, hidden somewhere in Narnia, dude. Like nobody can find it. <laughs> and and all and you didn't actually remove it. You know what I mean? All you did was change some ratios and add a different barrel. And it was like, how's it gone? Though? Like I understand how it could be muffled. Mm-hmm. I don't understand like the you disappearance, it. right? You, you true crimed that barrel, dude. <laughs> like <laughs> it's the wildest thing I've ever seen. But I but your blending philosophy is the most intriguing of anybody that I've talked to that I believe is good at blending by far. Dixon's Dixon's is very logical, very reasonable. I find a base. After I find a base, I put something on that base. How'd that go? Put some on that. Yeah, like Dixon's is building blocks, right? Which makes perfect sense. There's nothing outside of that that would be like, that doesn't work. You know, it just actually makes sense. When we were blending, I love this idea that you're like, what if we added this? While we were there the day that Sean and Joy were working on that labeling machine for seven hours, <laughs> you had put together 14 blends or something, 12, like legitimately in the teen number of blends. And we had gone through them and we'd be like, well, what did that add this or this? And you're like, well, maybe if we try this and every time we were changing, you were changing it because of your knowledge of like, 
I wonder if this profile that's back there would do. It was the most intriguing blending I've ever done was there with you, um, which is why I call you and I'm like, dude, how I literally called Jared when I was with Brandon the other day and I go, I just need one minute. How long does this fucking take, dude? Like, <laughs> what are we doing? We're missing a piece to a puzzle. You know, like we got a walk one. Away. Yeah. <laughs> dude, I'm impatient. This walk away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. I'm impatient. I'm a mess, dude. <laughs> but you're right, though. And it was that. It was, hey, you even said on the phone, probably let it sit five to seven. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, see if you liked it up front. Do you like it? Yes or no? Yeah. Five to seven. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. go re, go do something else. Revisit it in a week or something. So. And you'll shorten that up. So after you start doing a week, so you'll shorten up, shorten up, shorten up. And before long, you'll just know. And you'll, what you'll be really trying to adjust at the end is how it moves on the palate. Sure. That's really, that's what I have to kind of like. That's what takes me. I don't ever hit it right, you know. Sure. Uh, yeah. And if it's really perfect, usually it's off on the first roll. You know. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, that's gonna fuck me up. That's. Great. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> dude. Dude, I'm, I'm just now kind of figuring that out. Yeah, I just I didn't have an existential crisis through like 700 philosophy classes, right? Somehow I'm gonna have one tonight. Now so, I want you to know that. So it's funny what you put out on on MP77. Which is actually, I was working on seven seven. I go, I go, baby, this is whiskey of the fucking year. <laughs> and then, uh, and then I thought, no, it's too perfect. You know, like I started to kind of understand it. And then I was like, Joey put more in. He's like, you're fucking this up. I was like, I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. And I, I didn't hit it right. I knew that it wasn't right. Uh, I just needed a little bit more. So yeah, it started, I'm starting to kind of get it. This is this is truly this is a bottle that um will go in. I'm glad that I truly you know selfishly this is a purely selfish statement. I'm don't have I have some selfish statements. This is gonna be one of them. This <laughs> is gonna be a bottle. I don't know. This is gonna go into like hey at the end of the year like this is going in because truly from like a blend perspective the blend's actually sizable. I don't know if you mentioned that earlier when you were talking about how big this blend was, but this blend's sizable. Bottles. Yeah. Say that again. Eight or nine hundred bottles, almost a thousand. Yeah, that's yeah. a sizable release, which means there's plenty, right? There is. The fact that that this is a sizable release like that, uh, tastes like that. This is a this is a bottle that competes with big big bottles throughout the year. The proof's right. It drinks easy. Um, I just I'm just madly in love with it. But I'm glad you sent it. I'm glad you reached out on all that. I'm glad honestly today was phenomenal. Today went as possibly as perfect as it could have possibly gone. Yeah, that's yeah. so awesome, man. Huge yeah. shout out to you guys and huge shout out to patrons and, and everybody that showed up to help Matt out uh, in a time of need. Cause this is, I don't know, man. I just, somebody like walking in being like, Hey, you need like 40, 50 grand. Yeah. And you're like, what did you say yeah. to me? You know? Yeah. Before we'll even talk to you. Before yeah. we'll right. even, you know? Okay. Yeah. It was, an, it was an incredible day. So thank you guys. Thank you for making us a part of it. Truly. Thank you for coming on here, letting me waste literally three hours of your guys' time. Holy shit. My bad. And then, Fun. you know, Fun. talk too much and do all these things. So yeah. I appreciate you guys and love you guys to death, truly. So, thank you so much. Yeah, we appreciate you, Dan. Thanks. No, you guys helped us in a time of need. And uh, yeah, I'll be forever grateful for that. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to shut down the stream. Thank you guys for being here, watching the stream, hanging out with us tonight. We appreciate you. And uh, if you join, there's a link pinned at the top, but you can go hit uh, Barrel King's website and join the gold membership. If you didn't get one of these on Patreon or you weren't a patron, these will be in the February release and at, at quite a yield, which is great. So, you know, there's still hope if you want one of those bottles. Um, but yeah, is there anything else you guys want to say on the way out? Not really. No. Cool. Just Thank you so much. Thanks for having us on, yeah. man. It feels course. good to talk about all this it stuff, does. to be honest. Yeah. So. yeah. Like, there's stuff like we text about or talk on the phone about, or there's, you know, but there's also stuff like I didn't know. That's why I wanted to ask you guys about like when you guys started, like how this legacy barrel thing came in, you know, and how like some yeah. of these questions are like, I never, I just knew I liked it when I got there. I didn't know why you'd started that doing that way or anything like that. So, um, no, I appreciate you guys. And thanks, Matt, for jumping in because Matt's still in here. Yeah. Appreciate you, buddy. I hope that you feel loved and, uh, you know, 
taken care of and just go do like the fucking coolest shit in the world because that's what we all expect. Oh, the last question because a bunch of people have asked it really quick. Yeah. Is Matt working on like projects? Like people want to know when like there's a Matt project coming is what people want. So uh, Matt, as soon as the barrels, like they're just, they're just not like, I want, I just want him to have like the best stuff to work with, you know, like, so the barrels need about another month or two. Like as soon as the humidity and the, and the warmth, but I am sending Matt samples. We're going through things and there's some, there's some pretty serious like announcement type like things with Matt that we have to wait a few, a couple more months for. So there's some huge, huge projects coming and I don't want to spoil it. So Sounds yeah, good. Matt is working with us currently on, on, on things we send him samples, but for him to have his own blend, it'll be a minute just because uh, I, I just want him to start when the barrels are kind of starting to wake up. Cause I'm telling you, anybody who blends whiskey, you know, it's a shit show right now with them barrels. It's so it's ter- terrible. In, in the next couple few months is what you're saying. There's going to be some news. There's going to be something coming. Out. Yeah. There's going to be some cool news. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. sorry, Matt. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Hey, Matt. Do a good job, dude. You know what I mean? No pressure. Uh, he'll love that. Brian Thomas, Rachel, you're always amazing when I reach out with a question. Thank you. That's nice. Thank Everybody, you. thank you guys for being here. We appreciate you guys. I'm going to end the stream. We love you guys. Thank you for all the super chats. Thank you to all the patrons. Any patrons watching, thank you guys for like blowing this out of the water today and like exceeding yeah. every expectation humanly possible. Thank you so, so much. You. Truly. Love you guys. Cheers, everybody. Have a good night. We'll see you on Thursday. There will be a possibly the you know a little easter egg little last virtue vlog of all time so cheers i got you